Hey guys, welcome to episode 116 of 4 Play Anime Cast. It is now the 6th of April, and we are, surprised going into the new season of anime. It is spring 2019 season, and again, as we said in the previews, there's a lot of, um, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff that could potentially be great for you know, people of all, all kinds. So we'll just see how that pans out. But yeah, let's get right into it. Again, I'm your host, Spire, uh, and I'll be trying to roll through a lot of stuff today. Obviously, we have a little bit of a special episode. We'll be covering this and that. Uh, this is the first week, only episode one of sort of the earlier series are out. So you'll have to forgive us for having a slightly different set of series. But uh, Dark, what have you been up to these past two weeks? Um, I've been finishing off series, binging stuff that I neglected for a while, like Endro and mm-hmm. uh, Morose Watch Mono Kane. Watch his hand I kept up with. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. I was like, I just kind of finished that. Yeah. Um, all are pretty solid. Morose mm-hmm. Mono no Kane. I would be shocked if it didn't get a season three. Uh, some whack shit started happening at the end. That boy was I not expecting. Uh, that series had, like, yokai and stuff, but I wasn't really expecting how far they went. Okay. Uh, I also learned that apparently my mic is bad. I just found out now. So well, that's fun. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, except for the mic thing, obviously. But, uh, glad you've been catching up. Some, again, other than last season was a little bit of, like, a up and down kind of thing. But I'm glad you found enough of the ups to latch on to. And Nier, what about you? What have you been up to these past two weeks? Well, I've been uh, not watching anime. <laughs> uh, not part of the anime life? Yo, you should have watched the revisions or whatever that series was. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, pretty much all I've been doing um, is trying to catch up on JoJo. Uh, I you know celebrated my birthday. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and I've been playing uh video games. The you video know, games. Not watching anime. That shit's for losers. Have you been? You have you been railing against the <laughs> Epic Store? <laughs> I've been railing against the system, demanding for my easy modes. You know. <laughs> I can't believe second is so hard. I had to mash all the time. Hey, I cheated to beat the final boss of Sag Hero, and I feel fine. <laughs> how did how did he cheat? I didn't read that article. Fucking, I'm sure used. Uh, I didn't read it either. I'm not giving that a click, but I'm sure it's just cheat engine. Yeah. Just it's, watch a YouTube or some, video or some other basic hex editor because it's not like cheat engine, some special program. It's just an easier hex editor, but. Uh, this know. guy couldn't even beat Sekiro. You expect this motherfucker to run anything other than Cheat Engine? He's like, he's like, it's so special. It's a speed hack. It's like everybody's like, <sighs> <Wow. laughs> shaking my head. But anyways, so uh, he he, so, he used the slowdown mod tool. Yes, the very special slowdown mod tool, also known as a speed, speed hack, but with half speed. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so. A little bit of fortune, but hopefully this season has a lot of stuff for you to catch up on you. Yeah, and... none of it's out. <laughs> I mean, fairy gone. <laughs> it's not out. I couldn't. Oh, fairy gone's not out. Okay. Could not I find a single episode of that. Uh, the hopefully UFO it's... table shows out. <laughs> Which one? I'm not covering. Which one? one episode? I don't remember the name. <laughs> Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yeah, Kimetsu no oh. Yaiba. It's, good. it's like one of the bigger series. Yeah. More like oh. Kimetsu no Yaiba. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so hopefully again there'll be something for you to latch on. And as for you, Toast, what have you been up to these past two weeks? I saw a movie. Uh, okay. Oh, what did it come did out? Like to... Last month. Yeah, was it last month? Yeah, last month. I also saw uh, uh, the the real Captain Marvel. So okay. It, it was it was better than a Captain Marvel. <laughs> oddly enough. 
At least that's good then. Man, I didn't get to watch Detective Pikachu yet because that's in four days. <laughs> does, does, does that count as an anime movie? I, I, I'm pretty sure it does. Well, as I said, only if Ryan Reynolds uh, speaks in Japanese during the movie. But Pokemon speaking Pokemon, I saw Ludi Ludicolo. Was that the one with the funny kappa? The, the Ludicolo. Ludicolo is the it's a pineapple one, right? Yeah, I saw that in the movie, and I was like, "This is a Gen One. What, what is <laughs> yeah. this?" Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. What else did I watch? I don't remember. Uh. I'm not gonna call it Boku Ben. I'm gonna call it Benkyo wa Deki Deki Nine. You can't stop me. Mm, that's fine, I guess. You can't as long stop, as people stop. understand. I'm not gonna as call it as... Boku Ben. No. As long as people understand what you're saying, I guess. <laughs> sure. Uh, but you you watched a little bit of uh, Boku Ben or Boku Ben? And, then, and then, then I watched the, uh, the, the the not frame arms girl series. The uh, uh ones, well, I, I know remember, what you're talking about. What, the one six, the one uh, that, the, the the one six over the overdrive one six or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. she yeah. she kind of looks like Roll or uh, <laughs> what what that or Eve from Blaster Master Zero that that kind of thing. The the old style of Mecha Girl. Uh huh. Uh, actually, she looks like the one from X. I mean, oh, Alia. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That that's okay. a better description. G good job. <laughs> okay, well, at least that's good. It was, it was all right. Okay, so you've been all did, sort of. Did, 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 did you did you know he legally married her and like already? Good for him. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I I can't. The, the dude, I have no the, idea what you're talking the, about. The dude got a marriage license and she signed it with her palm print, so it's legalized. He's in there. <laughs> Is he? Is he? <laughs> yeah. He's okay. Saw, he saw her boobies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then uh, that that's fine. Then I'm glad you've uh. Helped cover a lot of Western movies for us, and you'll also be talking about a little something, something very pretty uh, significant uh, in this episode. So, uh, uh, watch, uh, listeners out there, watch out for that. And as for me, I've been a little bit on the quieter end, uh, kind of like dark, finishing up stuff like Endro, uh, kind of keeping up with stuff like Water Ten, so on and so forth. Uh, I've actually been for so. I, I've been kind of raring to go back to visual novels, and I haven't played the last Grisaya visual novel. So for those of you who don't know what it is, Grisaya no Kujitsu is a visual novel original, and um, and it is it's actually one what the first one of three in the Grisaya series. So this is the uh, the fruit of Grisaya, the labyrinth of Grisaya, and then the Eden of Grisaya. So. I have not seen. I have not read through the last one, and I raring to uh, go read the last one. But obviously, I haven't uh, found a good opportunity to kind of sit down and do all of it. So I've been kind of planning on doing that. I've been starting it out, and uh, obviously, been having a little uh, a lot of fun. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, nothing much going on, except. Yeah, I don't think there's anything much going on. I I've been in a sort of obviously waiting for this season, but it's like so it's like I've I'm like currently like quote unquote updated updated with some series right in terms of manga like you know go to no hano yome like I'm keeping myself up, up to date yeah, with yeah. how 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 would you like the quintessential quints who's your favorite quints <laughs> who's your favorite of the quints um, it's been very weird because my favorite was Miku, and then it became Ichika. I mean, you're still and... wrong, but all right. I mean, it's gonna be a harem end in the end, anyways. So why does it matter? <laughs> why, why, why do you like Ichika when she's the one voiced by Ayane Takatatsu? She she's a Fuck she, off, man. she's <laughs> Fuck she, off. she's the fake one, man. Uh, 
but uh, I mean, she's the only one keeping the story mildly interesting, so it's kind of like whatever. But uh, the point is that uh, I've been keeping up with a lot of manga, but for some reason, I'm kind of afraid to jump more heavily into reading other manga series just because of obviously the investment I have to make in terms of like keeping updated with the stuff. And I do like being updated rather than being like oh i forgot about the series what the fuck there's like 50 chapters now i don't really like that to be quite honest i don't know why so i've been sort of like in a stasis mode but that's kind of <laughs> so see i was like giving me shit in the chat for speaking <laughs> for for liking ichika out of the uh quintuplets <laughs> But that's the way it is. But uh, again, honestly, for Gotoven, we've talked about this, but it's going to be the Harriment. And I think with the later chapters, it's more likely that it's going to be the Harriment. But, anyways, uh, that's for later. And yeah, with that, we're uh, done with our intros. So let's start right off. Um, I think I'll just start off because I did watch a couple of shorts. All here. right, what did you watch? Yeah, so I just wanted to cover something a little bit short. I'll only do like one short because uh, for it right now. But um, so I did watch uh, Senmu Shoujo here, or I guess I could do do both depending on time. But uh, uh, the one I do want to focus on is Senmu Shoujo. So Senmu Shoujo is a um, series about uh, uh, this girl called uh, Yukishiro Nanako or Nanako Yukishiro, who is a sort of regular, very cute, you know, Genki uh, high school girl. But then she doesn't communicate verbally. She always uh, communicates by writing senryu, which is a type of uh, haiku, five uh, poem done in five, seven, five syllables, three lines. Um, in so, order to sort of com- yeah. So 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 let me let me ask you this directly: Who would win in a fight, Komi-san or the senryu girl? Pretty sure Komi-san could take her. <laughs> Wait, Komi-san from she, she, what? Ko- Komi-san has got that notebook, right? Notebook is stronger than a piece of paper, than a single piece of paper, isn't it? Wait, from what series? Well, what if you have like a lot of pieces? What are you talking? I, mean, I don't know what series you're talking about. You don't know? You don't know Kom- Komi-san? You liar! What are they f- fighting with? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what what is it called? Uh, Komi san wa kom you show des. Oh, ga. this one. Okay. <laughs> so she doesn't uh, talk. She's got she's got a notebook. It's like the same <laughs> premise, but she's got she's got a stronger she's got a stronger medium. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, uh, Nanako can't exactly bash people over the head with her with her little uh, flappy sheet of paper. So I don't know about that one. It's not even but, uh, like wood. Yeah, it's just essentially just like a, oh, it's like a, a sticky, sticky, uh, you know, like a stick, uh, sticky notepad. What's its, uh, what's its but... attack power? It sounds weak. <laughs> I I don't know if uh, there's that, that much lore yet, but uh, I'll, I'll 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 check it later to post, uh, just for you. But oh, okay. um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it is by I believe Connect. Uh, yes, it is by Connect, which is a sort of sister company that was made by. Um, sister company that was made by Silverlink down the line it started uh, their first project was like Strike the Blood so it was a while back but it's always sort of been the again sort of the smaller company sort of like how uh, A1 did it right so sort of like that and you can kind of see how the audio visuals pan out in a similar manner to how Silverlink kind of does it there's obviously sort of uh, you can kind of tell the budget with regards to how the frames pan out. <laughs> There's not exactly a lot of uh, uh, animation, so to say. But uh, in terms of just how, you know, generally clean the audiovisuals are, it's pretty it's pretty decent. Uh, I wouldn't say much of the VGM, but it is a short, so it's not like it matters that much. Um, in terms of how it translates from the anime to the manga, or for the manga to the anime, a pretty straightforward adaptation. <laughs> Pio's like she just uses her fists. Pio is a very violent person here. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, Senyu Shoujo was good. Wish it was longer. Well, that, the problem is that would it work 
if it was longer is what I'm wondering because it's like it's very episodic and it's very like the manga source material is very small and it's like the smallest pieces. So if it was longer, it'd be using like a lot of pieces. So I, I think there's just not necessarily um, enough. I want to say to the source material for uh, it to be more than a short, but well, I could be wrong. It, it could I mean, be it could it's... be like the Yamano Susume situation where like they, later on they could make a longer anime, but. I mean, they could just do, like, they could just make longer episodes, you know? Like, there wouldn't be a difference between them being a 12-episode short, or, or rather, a 24-episode short. Well, what I'm saying is, is there, in, like, is there enough material, short, or... is what I'm wondering. I mean, I don't know the source material, but do you know if by just sheer volume there? Oh, uh, there, there are eight volumes. Like... There are eight volumes, so I guess it would like, be enough. If by, like, sheer amount there's enough, like, all they would really do be you know like double down on parts of the episodes like yeah that's be true. split in the middle anyway yeah yeah, yeah that's but really true. like at this point i would say it's more of like it'd be nice to get you know 24 episodes out of this because then it, that would technically be like a 12 episode full but right 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 because it's entertaining enough but i don't think it like as far as pacing goes i don't think there would ever be a difference I mean, having yeah, this yeah, as a short yeah. I was no, I was I was mainly just wondering if there was just enough material in general, but there are like eight volumes of this thing, thing so there probably is. Um, but yeah, overall I do like it. Again, a little bit lacking on the frames, <laughs> but I mean I don't know what what you would expect from a, a short made by a smaller cutaway of Silverlink that's based around something that's not too big and. So, so basically, they're not Silver Link, they're Bronze Link. Ah! Uh, uh, God damn this. But um, one, one slight difference I would like to point out, uh, just like a very small difference, is that like, in the manga, like, Busujima Eiji, who is the uh, male sort of deuteragonist, protagonist, whatever, um, counterpart, right, set up for like romance and stuff like that, um, he is depicted in the manga at least he is depicted as a much more sort of like like uh more like potentially violent delinquent right so it's like they want to the author kind of wants to get into his background at times where it's like you know he he will be such he will be considered such a savage delinquent if it wasn't for the fact that he's stuck doing or he not stuck but he's he runs away and does haiku with this cute girl right so that's sort of like the the contrast you make. But I mean, then, he beats up that guy with a pompadour in episode one. That's pretty that's, violent. That's true. But that's, uh, that's only not, doing the poetry for finishing line. That sounds yeah. like she's got she's got pretty high stats over Komi-san then. <laughs> but uh, I, th I think there's there's a little bit more of that in the manga than what might be coming up in the anime, because, especially in sort of like how I don't know, like a, a lot of the way even the character is just drawn and seems a lot less like uh sort of like just like a regular guy kind of thing but it could maybe just be the art style or rather just the general art style so i'll just have to see but overall it's a pretty straight adaptation it's pretty good and it's a short so there's no real reason to like miss out on it so if you do like you know the slice of life stuff if you do like the the wonky premise of the the haiku girl or whatever the the non-communic mute haiku girl uh again as toast says similar to komi-san well komi uh please do check it out mm, should i go over outtown i guess i can what i oh, advertised dark? that we were okay so uh I said I over, didn't see it. yeah going over a little bit of our outtown i mean it's like either now channel thank you guys so this one is a little bit more of the straightforward um, uh, formula like slapstick, right? Where it's like they set up the premise, which is uh, Chun's father is like uh, she, she again, she has these like dirty thoughts because of her, you know, father's influence, and she does these awkward things. But then, um, the 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 uh, main dude, 
uh, again, also set up for the romance. So, so the way the reason why I phrase this like this, where it's like the uh, the main dude instead of the main character, is that the focus in both Alchan and in uh, Senyu Shoujo is mainly on, on the girl, but then they also have this like romantic sidekick, if that makes sense, and it's just the dude. Uh, so, so the other, right? So the romantic partner, um, Kijima, uh, Kich- Takumi Kijima, right? Uh, sort of, you know, uh, takes interest and starts, you know, trying to flirt with her, you know, confessing to her, whatever. And uh, Aochan in her head sort of completely takes it the wrong way, or you know, she's like when uh, uh kijima says something like you know please go out with me or like i like you or something like that she's just like blanks out and there wasn't that much information in sort of episode one and i have not read the manga but i believe it's going to be pretty episodic from what i saw in the previews and from sort of generally what the anime seems like um and i think it's just going to be like again just Kijima is going to take more interest in Aochan and be like, oh, you know, you want to go out and do this? You know, I'll hold this for you. Um, here's the eraser or whatever. And Aochan is just going to freak out. So I think that's sort of how the flow is going to go. Um, this is actually done by Silverlink, which is the main company, Silverlink, instead of Connect, <laughs> uh, the sister company. So both Silverlink and Connect are kind of doing these, like, you know, small shorts on the side to uh, keep afloat. But uh, honestly, it seems like a pretty straightforward adaptation of what the manga will be. Um, I like skim through the beginning of the mo- a beginning couple of chapters of the manga, um, and didn't really find too many uh, a lot of differences, if any, between that and the anime. So uh, I think it's just going to play out pretty straight. A couple of truncations here and there in terms of like you know scenes, but. Other than that, it's just going to be formulaic, kind of, quote-unquote, like, slaps, like, slash, sort of, sophomore humor. I don't want to say, like, so, Aochan, I don't think this is, like, full, like, Seitoko Yakundomo style, where it's, like, oh, we're just making banana jokes, like, like every 10 minutes. It's not like that. It's more just, like, uh, you know, he, the other dude is doing something to me, and I'm, like, oh, no, this is, this is perverted. Like, how, how, you know, what will he do to me, kind of that thing? but just taken up to 10. I think that's sort of how it works. But I think, honestly, that formula works out okay. I don't think it's necessarily you know, the, <laughs> the funniest type of humor for me, at least. But uh, if you kind of enjoy this gentle ride with, with a little bit of more slapstick than, say, you would um, in something like Senryu Shoujo, right? Then you should probably go check it out. Uh, you should probably try out the manga first, like skim through the manga. Again, it's going to be a relatively straight adaptation. But uh, if, if you do like it, please do check it out. But yeah, that's more or less all I had about Aochan. Both these, uh, both Aochan and um, Senyu, Senyu Shoujo are pretty straightforward adaptations of the of the manga of their manga originals. So I don't really have too much to say. But anyways, that was just my coverage on the shorts. And next. We want to go on to dark. Do you want to share something with us? <laughs> it's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch Nobunaga yet, Fire, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. We'll get to that. I'm, I'm not criticizing, although I would have if you did do Nobunaga. <laughs> we, we might have to at some point. <sighs> I think I think we're just going to do Rock, Paper, Scissors at that point, but keep going. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, this week I watched Hitori Bochi, uh, I think that's the abbreviation they use, yeah, right? They just do Hitori Bochi. Yeah, I think you can just say Hitori Bochi. Okay. So, yeah, I watched, uh, I watched that. Um, it's about a girl who suffers from extreme social anxiety. Uh, but in doing so, takes pretty, ext- takes pretty extreme action uh, to try and get out of conversation. Uh, so, like in the beginning of the show, uh, her middle, or no, her elementary school best friend to deal with her, that she's not going to speak with her mm-hmm. ever again unless she makes friends with everyone 
her middle school class. Yeah. She, um, she her, her friend is very like 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 you got to swim just throws her in the pool. <laughs> so, so so dark what, what's her servant stats? Could she could she beat the Senryu Shoujo girl? Uh, like she could, no because but, she would throw up all over herself. I don't, doesn't doesn't that count? Is that a poison attack? What the fuck. Not that's... quite. No. But um yeah, so that's like the basic setup of the series. Uh, and at the start of the show, she's going into a new school, and like the right off the bat, the first extreme measure uh, she takes is going through her notebook of trying to get out of making friends with anyone. Yeah, there's there's like a do... small small like shtick at the beginning where it's like, how how do I how do I complete Kaiten's mission, but not like you know actually friend anyone? And it's like, how about I. Uh get rid of middle school <laughs> yeah it's first first step abolish middle school yeah. <laughs> uh, that didn't work second step was be in any other class other than the first class and only be in a class of herself mm -hmm. so then she's technically friends with everyone uh that didn't work then her third attempt was to uh put a note on the front door of uh the classroom that just says class one has been abolished. <laughs> uh, that didn't work. Uh, and so, like, basically, that was kind of the jump into the deep end uh, sort of deal. And then she kind yeah, of right. accepts that she's going to have to do this. Right, right, right. Uh, but then it just falls apart slowly over time. Uh, she throws up during her introduction. <laughs> uh, just have you ever just you know fucking just lost your lunch before you introduce stuff? Yeah, I'm just trying to speak. <laughs> uh, so then uh, during all that, she decides sort of to uh, talk to the person in front of her, her like desk neighbor, uh, named Nako. Yeah, I I, uh, I do like I do like how they um um I mean there are one or two other series that might have done the same thing but it's like they set up with the calm person first like the stable person <laughs> the, you know how it's like there's in these sorts of shows there's always like this one girl who's like the the tall the calm one that has the short hair and shit like that right yeah, it's like yeah. it's like they set her up with that person first <laughs> it seems it's it's weird too with her character uh because it seems like they're also trying to make her out to be not really like delinquent but like the quote unquote, like the I guess like aloof, almost scary one, like the imposing yeah, exactly. one. Yeah, exactly. Yankee kind of. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah. So she, so she basically befriends and approaches quite possibly the most difficult person in the class. Right, but it's like the they're probably the author's probably setting up a contrast where it's like, um, you know, she she seems like a Yankee, or she seems kind of like a delinquent aloof, but then it's like she's actually one of the nicer ones. Right? Or something oh like yeah, no, uh, that that is definitely uh, what they're going for. But I feel like at the same time, it's also going for like over time to make friends with everyone. It's like she was kind of supposed to have been the most difficult one, right? Actually. But then surprise, right? She already, yeah, it's like she already is. Like she was also right. It was a lot easier than you would expect. Right, right, right. I feel right, like right. that might be the message that they're gonna go for. Yeah. Um. So their contrast is pretty nice. Um, the flow of the episode is really nice too. The way they introduced things, uh, where you know, like the introductions was kind of the first part, or well, the shenanigans was the first part, then the introductions. Uh, then like midway through the episode, they switched to like another premise of uh, them texting each other, mm -hmm. and Bochi winds up texting like way too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And finds like, it so, easier to talk through that. Right, 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 right. Um, in terms of so, I guess uh, this. I I think Nier, you watched uh, you watched a little bit of Hitori Bochi too, right? Um, what did you? And I I I have seen the episode myself, and uh, this studio is also C three C C C two C C two C is the one behind um. Uh, high school fleet. Uh, um, they did. Uh, they helped a little bit with Izetta, actually. 
uh, they did like a uh, kind of like other small stuff like Onei Changa Kita and like small other like small shorts and stuff like that. Uh, Yuru Mates. But um, beyond that, not too much. But uh, what do you guys think of the visuals? Um, I personally thought the visuals were pretty, pretty standard to okay. Like I, or rather, I don't know. I it was hard. It's nothing like I didn't really notice anything like super amazing. But I did think that they. Uh, it's nothing to write a home about, but it was though. actually smooth. Yeah. It, yeah, it was... it was it was smooth, and I thought that the switching between uh, the regular and like the chibi-ish style uh, was nice. Right, right, right. I think uh Nier. Nier is dead. Oh, I'm muted. Um uh, I thought the visuals were I mean they're pretty standard, right? But you you also have to realize um Hitori Bochi, the manga, uh is doesn't exactly have the greatest art, right? Very right. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the um I think the animation's a little bit limited in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, the studio did fine, I think. They're standard visual, so. Right. Um, another question I kind of like to ask is, like, I've read a little bit of this, and I also kind of... Um, obviously, I watched the first episode, but I would kind of like to... Well, how the introduction kind of planned out, and how sort of before before the whole like cell phone thing happened, right? Um, before the whole cell phone thing happened, like it, it, a lot of it was like, oh, I'll do this thing, and then an awkward thing happens, and then I'll do this other thing, and then an awkward thing happens. But eventually, it's, it kind of resolves itself, and in a sense. I thought that humor was very, like, it was most similar to Watamote. You guys, do you guys have the same feeling? I have not seen Watamote, so I can't comment on it. Yeah, have you seen, seen it? Yeah. Are, are, you, are, you, yeah. Are, you, are you comparing that Bochi girl to the unclean Tomoko who... Who doesn't wash for like a month and cuts off well, the seed oil? Well, I, I, what that, I'm saying that's is just rude. <laughs> uh, I apologize, but uh, do you get that sen same sense of like this is the sort of the, sort of the hum part of the humor where, uh, or the author is trying to drive towards at times? Kind of feeling like pretty uh, hard. No, I mean, I got it. Like, it's hard, right? Because mm -hmm. you get this, you get sort of like the same. Um, general vibe, but I think the humor is very different, right? Um, because Watamote, it's like you know, uh that that's cr that's cringe, feel bad humor. Yeah, Watamote is like it sets Tomoko up. Uh, that's her name, right, Tomoko? Yeah. Um, it sets her up as like you know, like you know she's a loser, right? Like right, right. Set up to be a loser, right? And it's not. The humor in Water Mode is more of being like, wow, what a loser, right? Right, exactly. And I think Hitori Bochi's humor is more like, um, you feel more bad for it, right? Because the the series isn't just being like, haha, what an idiot. She barfed all over herself like a stupid retard. Like, you know, that's what Water Mode humor would be like. So so it's like, so with Hitori Bochi, it's kind of like seeing like a, a little baby dog kind of like trip over her, uh, trip over his like own kind of feet kind of thing, right? And it's like, you're like, yeah. oh, but then you're kind of like laughing because it's like, eh, right? Yeah, it, it's you, feel, like you feel more bad for it because yeah. that's just the way the series um, presents the characters differently. I think that's the main Yeah, I, I can, I, I definitely see that. Yeah, I, I was just wondering because it's like when, when I saw these sort of series of awkward events happening, I was like, is this sort of how it's going to drive it? Like, it's just going to be kind of just shuffling the awkward down people's throats. But definitely, I think uh, uh, from that perspective, as you said, about sort of more, you know, treating her like, you know, she, she's trying so hard, but then she kind of ultimately kind of like trips up a little bit, but still progress progresses. I think that's a pretty good sort of way to summarize it, or at least value it. 
but yeah. Uh, I think I overall like the series uh, a decent amount, but I would like to... I don't know. This is actually like a series that I definitely like because I usually am like, you know, just, you know, check out check out the mod or whatever. But I actually honestly wouldn't mind because, again, uh, of what uh, you and Dark said about sort of the cleaners, uh, uh, visuals going in, I wouldn't mind kind of just scooting, cruising pretty much just the anim- with the anime with this series. Like, because usually it's just like, like the manga, the anime is copying, trying to copy off so much of the manga's art, and a lot of times, like promotional anime, kind of have a diluted version of the manga manga's art. Right? But this one does it like decently enough so that I'll kind of just watch the anime through, in my opinion. But um, what? How, how do you guys feel about that? <laughs> Dude, I don't read. <laughs> I forgot. Dark is illiterate. <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. I I I'm not I'm not fond of your self appreciating humor stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't really say this show does that though, right? Like it's not really self deprecating humor. It's more of like the humor's more focused on her either misunderstanding or going I mean, like it's just very her far with it. these plans. It's like the humor goes into more of the slapstick territory than it goes into something like Oh, you know, I suck, kind of thing. Again, it's kind of near said, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah because it's just like her being the... a goober, right? <laughs> yeah, the like I said in the beginning, like the first thing she does with the um sort of like oh, uh, class one, like class one has been abolished. Mm-hmm. Like exactly, everyone exactly. saw the sign on the door, and they were like, "What? <laughs> wow, looks like looks like we got a jokester in this class. This should be pretty fun." And it's not like, you know, everyone's walking into the class like, who's the fucking idiot that put this on the door? Yeah, I know. Oh, like, Let's I right? get him. Like, yeah, it's not... I can't wait to beat him up. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So, but, uh... I, I don't think it's much, yeah, I don't think it's much self-deprecation. I think it's more of just from the extreme misunderstandings. And, like, these sort of, like, uh, what's it called? Overestimation? Maybe, or something? Of, mm-hmm. like, how difficult it should be to make friends with people in the class Mm -hmm. um i feel like the uh that initial part kind of showed that like of her putting down that paper because everyone kind of thought it was pretty funny um and also just her uh befriending uh nako right Uh, towards like you know toward spoilers towards the end of the episode she (laughs) just asks her like or rather she says something like, oh, yeah, can we be friends? Mm-hmm. And Naka's like, I... We're not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's like that, it's like a pretty standard like, like joke to be making, but it's still like, it, it works pretty well for what this series is like. It, it kind of wants to aim towards, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's very like, uh, it's all the nose in a good way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sense, it, yeah, it was a, it was a, Something that you will see in a lot of, and yeah. like you're like I I, I, I like want that. to see this at least once, kind of almost. almost. Yeah, because yeah. because I do feel like the in general the series is more towards, uh, just giving off the message of it being easier, like much much easier than she expects. Right, 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 right. She she has all these trepidation, but then it's like oh, you just you know talk talk with them. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, uh, do you, uh, Dark Near, do you have any last words for the series? Any sort of like recommendations or anything? You want to go now? Dark? What? Yeah. Um, I don't really think, I, I don't know. I don't really think they do have a ton to say on it. Um, I kind of want to see where it goes because I obviously I haven't read it, but I'm curious to see if it's going to focus more on just her Nako. Or like a handful of characters, or if it's going to be more of like we're going to have almost you know the full cast of twenty nine students, even if it's like <laughs> wow. some of them are paired into groups. I can tell you, it's it's just a handful of characters. Okay. But, um... And then she'll never talk to her best friend again. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, you know, I've I've read a little bit of the manga. Um, mm-hmm. not that much. Um. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like I was saying before, like, the manga's art style, it's very 
you know, it's very simple, you know, pretty standard for combo manga, right? Uh -huh. um, so I think, you know, the studio did a pretty good job of translating something so, like, you know, standards, fairly pretty much nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Into, you know, something that looks clean. Um, if not, you know, it's nothing to really write home about, but it doesn't hurt to look at, right? So, right, right, um, exactly. I think the studio did a good job. Um, and you're not looking like, at the frames go by and you're like, hmm, there's yeah. literally like two frames. For <laughs> there's yeah. actually like some frames in there. The music's fun to listen to. Um, you know, it uh, doesn't take away from anything. Um, it doesn't really enhance the experience either. But, you know, again, I think this is very standard um, comedy series. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing like, there's nothing wrong with it, of course. Um, you know, it it does what it does. Um, but, uh, you know, don't expect this to be like the funniest fucking thing you'll watch this season. Right? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Well, like you know, what? What? I mean, if this is not going to be the funniest, what is? What's your? Uh, what do you think will be the funniest? Uh, you want my you want my future predictions of what's going to be the or funniest or thing? However you say that. <laughs> yeah. Isekai Quartet. He's the guy, of course. <laughs> dude, it, dude, it sold like four times. Combined, all of the series, they sold four times as much as pretty much anything else in the world. So it has oh, to be four be, times as yeah. funny. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it's math. And I'll dude. laugh four times as hard. <laughs> yeah. That actually yeah. makes it eight times as funny when you really yeah, think about it. Dude, that's the math, dude. Oh, my fucking God. Fucking that's serious. Quick math, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, fucking serious. But anyways, uh, thank you, Dark and Nier, for helping cover uh, not Isekai Quartet, but uh, <laughs> uh, Midara na, Midara, excuse me, fucking, <laughs> I'm like flaking out right now, sorry, because I'm like multitasking. But um, uh, Hitori Bochi no Maru Maru Sekatsu. So, uh, so this is uh, the name just as on the side, it's like a little pun where it's like, Hitori Bochi means like, you know, a loner, right? A loner's blank life. Maramaru is how they say blank in Japanese. But Hitori Bochi is also the girl's name. Hitori Bochi. So yeah. Anyways, uh, after Hitori Bochi no Maramaru Seikatsu, I do want to... I do want to... Um, <laughs> I trust the Toaster Isekai Court. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's, that's what I was saying, Sasyan. <laughs> But anyways, let me trust in Toast or something else entirely. And uh, do you want to take it take it away, Toast? Huh? You, you've been wanting to cover this for quite a while now. Do you want to cover it? <laughs> You'd like to tell us how you feel about it? <laughs> about, about what? Is it a Heaven's Feel? <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the movie. Yes. About Heaven's Feel Part 2. <laughs> Lost feel, butterfly. Feel. What has feel made in recent oh years? Oh, Shut up. <laughs> Yo, can we, can we cover that? Can we cover the series or the movie? Excuse me. Feel did uh, Island, right? Oh, the one that. Oh my uh, no god. <laughs> Toast, oh, just fucking cover the movie. Dude. Cover the movie, Toast. Come on. What, what movie? <sighs> I mean, if if we you want to give up skip another it. spot, yeah, we could skip. We could skip it. <laughs> right, do, do you want to cover uh, the heavens feel with me? Uh, 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 there we go. I found found the picture. See, I, see, I, this is called delay tactics. I was stalling until I could find the movie poster. <laughs> oh yeah, my God. I think it's called dead air. <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't don't worry about Toast, it. Toast will now help us cover. <laughs> so, so, so who so who else has watched the movie? I think uh, you're... I don't think anyone. Nier, did you watch the movie? You think I have money to take an hour long bus ride to watch <laughs> this goddamn movie? No. I, I I drove three hours to buy some Yu Gi Oh cards. What's the big deal? Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, you know what's going on though, Nier, right? It's not like it's not like this movie is gonna have like some surprise twist ending, right? It's like, just, oh, you never know, dude. <laughs> we're, we're, everyone's waiting for that uh, sparks liner high. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I believe, I believe, Nier. Make, just make it like a uh, future vision, or whatever. Saying yeah, like, this, a, this will happen a... if I don't bring Ryder with me. 
20 minute dream sequence. Hell yeah. <laughs> anyway, so do you want to keep going? So, so uh, near, 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 how much you know about Heaven's Feel? You, you completed that route? Of course. Okay. <laughs> so, Heaven's Feel Part 2, Lo- Lost Butterfly, takes place right after Sh- Shira loses a. Do, do you care for spoilers? Mm, I think it's fine. Like at this point, it's kind of. Like, I can't I mean, believe you like would spoil. Fate, fate night. <laughs> yeah. Like fate fate twenty night. years old now. <laughs> I think. I think I'll, like I'll, 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 I'll defend you. I'll defend you if somebody criticizes you. Okay. So, Thanks. so this, this at, at the end of movie one, Shiro loses everything, and we're like, oh, mm-hmm. you suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then after that, he's all. Uh, Sakura was like, wow, you loser. Why'd you lose everything? She just stay inside. And Shiro was like, no. <laughs> and okay. S- and stuff happens. Like, I don't want to say it, but compared to the first movie, this one's kind of lackluster. I mean, it's it's got it's got what is arguably the best fight scene so far in, in the movie. But it's still lackluster. Oh, I mean, overall. Okay. The, the the first the first movie had what did what did it have? Uh, it had a uh, Lancer versus Assassin, and then Rider versus Lassen. That Assassin that was cool. Now, do you think it was lackluster primarily just because it was the middle movie of three, and it couldn't really have like, you know, a pure beginning or any sort of real end? It's. It's lackluster because this the the first movie you know set up the premise and here, here's all the stuff so, and it makes you excited yeah, for the second movie. The first movie. movie is all built up. Then, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then this movie is hey we're gonna build up Sakura's character and that's fine and all but there there's there's a reason why Sakura is not really the uh, the favorite girl so far. Okay. She she's not exactly the uh, she's not uh, exactly the strong ind- independent kind of car- girl that the other two are. S- saber is saber, you know. I- I'm the king of knights. Look at me. I don't need no no man. Look at me. <laughs> oh, look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and then Rin's like, I'm I'm Sundre and I can do everything. But sh- shut shut up, you Ibaka. <laughs> Even though I mess things up, I'm I'm still a Rin. I can do everything, and then and then Sakura's all, hey, look at me, I'm I'm Sakura. I I call her Tosaka Senpai, even though I'm her sister, and, and I got purple hair because because of the worms. Because of the. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? It's the truth. Yeah, no, no, I keep she, she she was born with black hair, same as Rin, but then. And then black hair was it blue eyes? I think, sure, whatever. But then yeah. her her hair turned purple because of the worms, and she's the whole damsel in distress thing where I, not nothing goes my way. I'm so sad until I meet I meet Shiro. You know that that loser who was practicing the high jump for hours on end. And she's all like, "Wow, what a loser! Why is he doing that?" And <laughs> then she admires him, which coincidentally is pretty. See that's the thing. I don't. I don't like this part where Sakura's all like, "Oh, I I met I met Shiro when he was doing the long jump, and I was so inspired by his will to never give up." And then later in in the uh, in Shiro's junk 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 uh, what's it, junk store sh- shed scene, Rin's all like, "Hey, you know, I, there, I saw you that one time in the doing the long jump or the high jump, you loser." And he's all like, "Wow, you saw that? Shut up." And Sakura's over here, and she's like, wow, you dick. Don't steal my memories of him. <laughs> and she gets all angry, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's not cool, Sakura. Let, just let her have some limelight. But yeah. Oh. It, this, mo- this movie was mostly about, oh, look at me, I- I'm Sakura, I'm all sad. And I'm like, I can sympathize with that, sure, but it get, it's kind of long-winded. Most of, the, most of the movie is her being... Most of the movie is her crying, and then like, oh, uh, do I want to talk about it? Yeah, sure, I'll talk about it. Uh, 
Okay, she's don't all, she, worry too much about she's, spoilers. She's all crying and be like, Senpai, don't leave me. And Shiro's like, no, shut up. I gotta be a hero. Take out <laughs> the war. And then she's she starts crying, but then there's this... What is it? The, uh, the great black evil that's spreading throughout town. There's this black shadow. And Shiro's all like, I gotta stop this black shadow. It's interfering <laughs> with the war and killing people. And then Sakura's all like, no, don't touch it. He's all, she's all like, he's all like, shut up. Then he runs off and gets injured, but he doesn't have sabers, so he can't activate his healing factor. Uh, can you so can you explain a little bit more about um, why you think it's sort of overall? I like it, I've been saying Sakura's not that interesting of the character. She's the damsel in distress. So you think so you think it's just the, how the general route in itself works out? No, it's just this part. This okay, part well, of soccer because Ilya's in there and she's okay. all like, "Hey, look at me! I'm Ilya. I got Berserker. I'm gonna help you out, Shiro." Because big spoiler, not really. She's all. It's, like, a, it's I, the I, same thing in the. Uh, it's pretty much straight out above the route, right? So it's more more more, just, more straight than the other route, well, if you if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean it's a pretty straight adaptation. I mean it's pretty quite heavily truncated, sure, but right. I think I think I would imagine what Toast is probably down on is because uh to be honest, uh Heavens feel a Sakura's route, right? But right, so, right, right. Sakura Sakura is pretty much the weakest part of the route. Um right. yeah. Like everyone likes Heaven's Feel because of um, you know, the Berserker fight, um, which is like definitely one of the best fights like definitely. In, in the visual novel in general, right? Mm-hmm. Heaven's um, Feel has what, like three or four good fights? Yeah, that are people really, like really, Heaven's really Feel good. Fight fights. Unlimited really Blade Works good. has maybe two. Yeah, I mean n- like not even to mention, you know, Sparks Liner High, yes. uh, which is definitely the best, like the the best part of the visual novel which unfortunately probably won't get animated i believe because i believe it's a it's a bad end um but uh yeah heaven's feel is you know it's it's her route but she's the worst part of the route um <laughs> and you know from the sounds of it it seems like the movie for the most part uh, is you know of course focusing on her because mm-hmm. The first movie, you know, she didn't really get that much screen time, right? Like she, they... she didn't do, she didn't do, she didn't. She's doing the same thing as she is in this movie, except in this movie, she turns into the bad girl. Spoiler. Yeah. Um. Yeah, spoiler. Sakura's actually the antagonist of the route as well. Um. <laughs> but uh, because in the first movie, you know, she got her scenes where you know they were in the shed by by the heater, and you know they were talking about the high jump scene and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, you know, I was I was so motivated by your, you know, your perseverance, even though you know, you did eventually just give up on high jump, but whatever. Um, but yeah, if uh, I mean, if the second movie focuses like almost entirely on Sakura, then I can imagine it being uh, feeling uh, more lackluster compared to the first movie because. As I said earlier, the first movie, it's all set up, right? Right. Um, yeah, um... It builds up. Uh, I mean, it builds up Saber Altar. It builds up, um, you know, uh, the Rider, um, like Alliance. Uh, it builds up Ilya, just like in general. Mm-hmm. You know, it just builds up like pretty much the entire route, right? And then it leaves you on this big cliffhanger, and you're like, oh man, I can't wait for more. And then if the second movie is just like Sakura, 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 <laughs> Berserker fight, Sakura, 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 it's like, well, whatever, right? You know. Right. Near, near. Let me say this: that Berserker versus Saber Ultra fight, really, really good. Yeah. Really, <laughs> really good. Imagine. Full power Berserker versus actually full power Saber. That's the thing about Sa- or Heaven's Feel. You get to see both the, the servants that usually are. are they usually don't get much limelight, like Lancer, Ryder, even Berserker. They get to show off their full power here in this route, and it's really good. So then, this is, uh, sorry, sorry. Can, can you can you finish? Or uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just like... gonna keep talking about how good that Berserker fight is. 
<laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, yeah too, um, too. what else? What going off like continuing with what Nier is saying? The first movie was more consistent with its highs and lows. Like here's here's this thing, and then here's a little right, down, right, right. and here's this thing. It goes up, and this goes down. This one is a uh, re. This one's really not as consistent. There's this big high point, and then it goes down really low for about. 30 but that's minutes. Not, again, it's not the problem with the movie. It's the problem with that part of yeah. the route that's in the movie. Yeah. yeah. More than anything else. Uh, so this is the second part of three, right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah. He, so the, ne- the next movie, what's it I don't even. Spring song comes out in twenty twenty spring. Just get it, get it, get it, Spire. Twenty twenty spring because the end of Sakura's route takes place in the spring. <laughs> God. Whoa! Okay. Whoa! I'm not entirely sure if that's why that happened, but okay. Well, you know. Uh, they should have released the Persona anime over an entire year. Yeah. <laughs> just like, uh-huh. just uh, have it exactly in line with the, with, with well, the, with the story. What else do I want to say about this movie? Uh, what are the high points? The high points? These fight scenes are really good. Like, yeah. Wait, can you? Can, do you think? I mean, you know how you know how Dragon Ball Z the uh, the first Lancer versus Archer fight was. That set the, that set the the mark for the series, mm-hmm. for online blade works. It's like that, but times ten. It's even better than, <laughs> it's even better than the the original Saber versus Berserker fight. Where that one was really good. This one time, mm-hmm. they're flying everywhere, destroying the castle. All all those Excalibur Morgans flying around. Mm-hmm. Really good. <laughs> and then, but uh, uh, what uh, what uh, what are other high points? Uh. Shiro got in there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> this is the first time in the routes that Shiro got in there. Get right in that ass. Yeah, yeah. No. no more mana dolphins. <laughs> mana dolphins. Well, they well that he, well Sakura doesn't need really a mana transfer because she's she, she's got them imaginary numbers and big big spoiler. She's she's a she has a piece of the holy grail within her. Whoa. But uh, in terms of how the um, well, this is sort of like a two-part question. Um, but the first part I would do want to sort of ask separately is: um, then, do you think the third and the last part will? Oh, end the, up... it's definitely going to be the best part. Okay. The, so, the first part ended on the cliffhanger. And, and where... do you think it's going to round it up? Like, yeah, it's going. It's going. This... It's going to be the best part. No, 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 no doubt about it. First part ended with oh Shiro, Shiro I I lose Saber now I'm now I'm now I'm useless. Second part ends with hey, hey Sakura why why do you eat Gilgamesh? <laughs> and, and and then Shiro, and then and then and then uh, Archer's like me arms. And then then he and then, <laughs> you know you know that scene right near <laughs> yeah that scene with Mr. Krabs where his arms pop off yeah yeah it's it's, it's like that. So she, Shiro's got a new, uh, I mean, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll, it's, fine, it's fine, I'll say it. After the Saber versus Berserker fight, Saber Alter, they get attacked by the Black Evil. And then Shiro saves Ilya, or Rin, I don't remember, probably Ilya, from the Black Evil. But he's infected by the Black Evil. But it's okay, because Archer was fighting the Black Evil. And he can't be corrupted like regular servants, because he's an irregular servant himself. Cause you know, is that what makes him the tan man? No, that's from his uh projection. He's burning away his skin, becoming the the, uh, the tan man. Because <laughs> he's he's he doesn't turn into the really really tan man. That's Emmy Alter. I don't know if I'd call him tan. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's it's because you know he's he's what he's a counter guardian. He's he's true neutral. The, the the corruption from the the big the black evil doesn't really work on him all that much so he's f- able to fight against it then he's all like oh shiro you idiot why why did you why did you get hit and he's like oh no i got hit too and then archer <laughs> and then archer's all like if if i do nothing both of us will die but at least this way someone will live so so he so he cuts off his arm and he's all like hey Bring him to the priest guy. He'll know what to do. 
And everyone's all like, are you insane? Do you know what this is? And he's all like, shut up. I got this. But then he dies. So yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. So yeah, they graft Archer's arm onto Shiro. But they, but they uh, have to seal it up because... You know what this is, like... Remember how Vash had that, uh... You know why Vash, the stampede, is called Trigun? Or why it's called Trigun? Because cause Vash, Vash has got... He's got his, uh, his cool Mateva revolver. Then he's got the robot arm. Then he's got the third arm. It's like the giant laser cannon thing. That's basically what they grafted onto Shiro's body. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Because a, a servant, a servant, a servant is like this really strong magical thing. So they they compare it to in the in the not in the uh, in the uh, visual novel to like a ticking time bomb thing where he, where Shiro he's all like he's taking a bath and he's all like hey this shroud that's connecting my body to this arm let me t let me peel off a little of it so he raises it like a little then he like nearly dies. Because, you know, he can't handle it. He's, it's too powerful for him. <laughs> and he's all like, darn, I guess, I guess I can't do anything with this. Yeah. Uh, so. So, yeah, it's, it, this, this arm basically will give him servant-like abilities later on, which we'll see in part three. <laughs> okay. so he'll, he'll be able to fight against servants, unlike Shiki, who can only fight a defensive battle. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, it's fine. Overall, yeah, I mean, w w I mean, w I guess it's definitely. Is, what? Uh, oh, go ahead. I don't think I don't think there's really any point. I don't think there's really that much point in asking like how you would recommend this to somebody because I'd, like I'd the people want... who because the people who would watch this, especially like in the West, right, right, are people are, who are already like 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 we're, at, we're in there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You guys are like like neck deep into like <laughs> more, more like into... more like worms deep. <laughs> worms deep, yeah. You guys are so deep, or or not like so deep, but like pretty deep into fate enough that you would go out and watch, you know, the Heaven's Feel movie where it's much harder to access. I mean, I would say it's definitely harder to access in the West than a regular Western movie would be, right? So, um, I don't know if I should even say like. You recommend it, but like you should. Would somebody... I recommend it? Yes. You sh This is you. You need no, no, no. no like obviously, you already story. recommend. It. But what I'm saying is that like if somebody, if somebody that was thinking about going to watch Heaven's Feel, right, like in the West, and they just kind of like asked you, like you know, yo, how was it? How would you respond? Like in a pretty like succinct manner. It's not as good as the first movie, and it definitely won't be better than the third. But okay. you, you should only watch it if you've seen the first movie. Okay. It's like, all right. There's no point. Because when, right, when, right. when at the end of the movie, I mean, it's, it's... I, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that the people who are asking to watch or like planning on going to watch the second one again are deep enough so they they've already watched the first part. Yeah, 100. <laughs> because at yeah, the exactly. end, it, it says like next preview, and it's like here we're gonna show you part three, and it treats it like an anime or like as a part two of three. So. Right, definitely right, have right. to watch it. Yeah. Did, okay. Oh yeah. Yep. Near, near. near. Did, you know, uh -huh. did you know? Did you know? Do you know what triggered Sakura to turn into the Black Evil? Spoiler. Yeah. Did you Did you know that Shinji almost raped her in this movie? <gasps> and she's Whoa. and she's all like, no. Surprise. She's all like, no. Yamate, and then the Black Evil kills Shinji, and she's all like, oh. Guess guess I'll guess I'll be bad now. Yeah, and then, then guess I'll just be evil. Yeah, <laughs> it's time to be really angry. <laughs> so I I got no, I I got nothing left because of this black evil. I might as well just do it. And everyone's all like, "Yeah, Shin Shinji's dead. <laughs> you deserve uh, it." Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I mean, uh, yeah. Will I watch it again? Yes. Will I feel better about it the second time? Probably not. <laughs> will I, will okay. I watch it in English? Sure, why not? I got okay. tickets. So I guess uh, that'll be that then again, as Toast said. It's a, it's, it's, it's a good movie. 
highly recommend it, even if there's only, I guess, two good scenes. <laughs> two, uh, one, two. Yeah, I think it's only two. How long is it again? It's like approximately. That's that's how I felt when I was watching this movie. <laughs> I, I was I all like, I was like, yeah, I was like. <sighs> I mean, the first one's almost two hours, right? Yeah. I was like, get soccer off the screen. Right, right, right. Just like... 107... Seriously? Just like, let me, get to the, let me get to the battle scene. <laughs> only 117 minutes? Really? What? <laughs> it felt longer than that with the soccer scene. Right. <laughs> yeah, well... Near, near, near. Did you know... Zokin is made of worms. <laughs> what? He turned. He turned into. He turned into worms and flying worms. And I was all like, "Whoa, that's gross." Whoa. Plot twist. <laughs> oh Jesus! But anyways, again, thank you, Toast, so much for uh, helping cover a Heaven's Feel. I know that, although again, it is the second part. It's still a big, you know, thing that we should probably at least have mentioned. Did you, did but, you uh, know did this it. sold more than the first part? I don't believe it. Well, it's probably just like momentum because it's like pe more people are just kind of gathering around. So like the people who are watching the second part are also people who didn't necessarily come to like the premiere, but they've probably watched the first part and they're like, oh, I also want to check out the second part now. And then they've like caught up and they're going to watch the premiere. You know what you I mean? You mean like me. Y yeah. So I think I think that's sort of how it sold more because there maybe, are more maybe it sold more them. because they they saw that soccer scene were all like, wow, he's in there. Good job, my yeah. man. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, people, thank you. people really like Sakura. I don't, but uh, that's not me. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you again. Near, 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 near. Who? Who? Which servant is Sakura in Grand Order again? Parvati. She's also Kama, uh, right? Parvati, Kama, and I think there's another Sakura face. I don't remember. Who, who's who's? I know the... there's. I'm pretty sure there's. I'm pretty sure there's more Sakuras than there are Rins in FGR. Really? Rin has what two? Rin has two, yeah. Okay. Then, then which one was Ilya? Which was like the uh, the Aborigines um, girl, right? Yeah, with she's the one with the bear. Yeah. I don't remember her name though. How? But how many Shiro's are there? <sighs> Four. Um, I mean Emias. There's uh. I mean, there's Emia, there's Emia Alter, and what about Masa Masamune? No, not He's... not Masamune. Mar Marakuma? No, you know who I'm yet. talking about. Yeah, he's not in yet. Wow. Uh, everyone's in the. Is it? Is it Masamune? I think what it is. Everyone's in the Masamune waiting room, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for him to get at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's it. But again, thank you, Toast. I knew we did need to uh, at least like cover it, or at least like mention it. So um, thank you for helping us cover that. And with next, that we'll... next week, I'll come with an actual series from this thing for this season. Yeah. <laughs> this thing over here, <laughs> that that thing. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to move on now to our news. We do actually have a lot of news th these two weeks. These aren't even like the full like you know the month of news that we didn't have because uh during our preview episodes of course we do not cover the news but uh just in these past two weeks there's been a lot of like fucking uh significant news so uh, a lot of weird and significant news so we'll try to go through them pretty quickly a lot of company re related news so we'll see to that as well but um anyways first off the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Committee for the Rights of the Child is currently calling for comments on a new draft for, quote unquote, guidelines on the implementation of the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the Sale of Children, Child Prostitution, and Child Pornography. So what they're essentially doing is that the UN, UN Human Rights Division is considering, you know, cartoons and drawings of like little mm. kids and, you know, like on hentai and stuff like that as child pornography in the initial draft of the guidelines document. So this is part of um, an earlier push from, a, you know, a couple of years back. We covered this, right, actually, where it's like people were like, you know, child pornography, like, what do we do with this? 
and the EU was getting involved, the UN was getting involved, so on and so forth. But um, this is probably one of the, the latest push to kind of put out regular put it on regulations although i don't really know necessarily what the u.n specifically can can do about it right it's like <laughs> Nothing. the u.n is always infamous for being a toothless snake right that sort yeah. of thing right it's like so i'm not sure what exactly can happen but um i don't what know do you man think? i saw hotel rwanda they did a whole lot in that <laughs> <laughs> but what do you what do you guys think about like the general idea of this I mean, uh, the last Nobunaga, while well, you can. The last time they did this, <laughs> Japan literally just said "fuck off." Yeah. Like, like what are they gonna do? Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the problem. Like, e- even if this like made perfect sense, which I I think it's a little bit like. I mean, like I'm not necessarily like, oh, we should have all like, content or something like that. But it's like, let's be real here. Like, people are just kind of drawing shit. It's not the same. It's actually like. Bringing up a kid and like taking his foot out. Oh, like, hold hold on a second. How old is Sakura? She's 18, right? In. In Fate? Uh, yeah. No. Oh. Uh, no. I right? think... No. Uh, Rin, yeah, dude, Rin they're and. All, they're, all, they're all super seniors. Rin, in Fate. Rin and Sakura are all of age, aren't they? Even Ilya's older. I is don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. I'm I think almost like seven. Seven. Let me check. Hold on. Let me. Help me, Google. I mean, they. <laughs> They might be just because for like legal reasons, but, but I'm pretty sure they're like six, seven. But the uh, but if you if you read the novel, there's a there's a uh, there's a disclaimer that says everyone here is of age. Yeah, I mean, is that there in the original though, or is that is there in like it? the translation? I see it in the translation. I don't know. Yeah, because that might just be there for the translation, like for legal I mean, reasons. I- Ilya looks like that, but she's a homunculus, and she's actually born. Yeah, I she's say... like, she's older than Shiro, isn't yeah. she? So, but yeah, I mean, again, this stuff like it's not gonna. So, so, so I mean, I mean, I'm in the clear, right? Yes, it's, it's not fine. like it's not like Shaman King yes, where, yeah. what what's her name? What what's uh what's the girl in Shaman King's name? Uh, Anna. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah. She 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 was underage. When, when it happened. Yeah, but a lot of them were under. It's like you just had people that were that essentially looked like middle school kids, like in there, right? But it was, but it was like in like was, how was like um, elementary school kid or something. It was ex- it was like. explicitly implied that they they did it before the uh, what? Yeah, it was explicitly implied before they went to the Great Shaman no, King well, War, well, and she was all like before. Yeah, wait, was it really? That that one scene where. Because I know, I know the sequel is like they have a kid and like they're all grown up and shit like that, and the kid is pretty old compared to like how young they are. Yeah. But I didn't know that that was implied. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> Don't you remember that scene where in there in the room and she was all like, "I'm gonna hang out with you tonight," and he's all like, "Yeah, okay." I don't think that's. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> do you, do you... Hold on. Yeah, well, we'll need to review that scene because I'm pretty sure he, he got in during that time. Okay, well, we'll see, <laughs> but uh, that's a, that's an interesting way to see it. But uh, I guess I guess that could have been. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I don't. Overall, it's I don't think uh, I don't think it's really gonna work. And obviously, we'll see what the UN and the EU kind of try to do. But I don't think it's gonna be much. Well, I mean, again, like I said last time, I tried this. Japan said, like, nah, <laughs> nah, like, like when they pushed it. it Japan basically just said this like uh thing like this document or whatever that they pushed like there's no there's nothing legally binding like in any of it right so I can't imagine this new one has anything different right mm-hmm. like there's no it's like he- there's no there's no law in these things they're pushing well I mean even even, even, in the guidelines, even in the guidelines right? even in the guidelines they have regulations but they don't have a statute of like punishment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do if you break the guidelines? Like, is the UN <laughs> just gonna, gonna be sl- like, <laughs> are, are you gonna like ban all of Japan or something? Yeah, just ban Japan from things. <laughs> I mean, the UN is just gonna like what raise its voice? Like, <laughs> who cares? What, yeah, we, exactly. Like, what can you do against Japan? Where do we get all our anime from? Japan. The UN. The where, UN where, will no longer. Be buying their members 
copies of Aroni Kenshin. <laughs> where, where, where do all our automobiles come from? Germany and Japan. Who controls all the robots? Japan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, it's like that, what are you going to do, stab me guy? Well, he got stabbed, so... Yeah, but... <laughs> did he die? I don't think so. Well, then, yeah, he's good. <laughs> but he did get stabbed. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. I don't think the UN case would even be able to, to like, stab them. What are you going to do against Japan? They got they got them karatas over there. Remember the, <laughs> uh, the BattleBots thing? Wow, one guy made one robot. Then season two, <laughs> oh no, we're out of money. Guess what? Karatas... You can buy a car you can buy more karate than you can of that one big battle bot. So uh <laughs> they might have not they might not have a they might have lost the battle but they won the war. <laughs> Anyways, uh moving on then. Uh a little couple of like weird um on a say movie studio kind of stuff. First, this is very like wild. Um the California Film Commission revealed on Tuesday that Warner Brothers live action Akira film was shot entirely in California uh, and received a tax credit of 18.5 million US dollars. The project must be in production within 108 days to receive the tax credit. So what the fuck? So so who who's who's Akira? Is it Johnny Young Bosch? Didn't he voice Akira in the original? Um I have no idea. Or was it Tetsuo? One of those guys. I don't know. I don't know who I don't it think, is. I don't think he No, he was, like he was he was Kaneda. Kaneda! Yeah, there you go. I, I think this is honestly like straight It's also going to be John Cho. <laughs> yeah. It's also gonna, they're just going to have like oh, random people from Fresh Off the Boat. Like, just like. <laughs> just like. 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 Uh, I don't think I mean, it's gonna be whitewashed. It's just I think people just think it's not a great idea. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, does. it takes place in to Tokyo. Yeah. The last uh, time we said it doesn't matter. Look what happened. Yeah, we got. It didn't matter. We got. <laughs> we got Dragon Ball did. Evolution. I'm Goku. I'm a oh, white boy. That is not that. That is, lives no, in the mountains. How did Ghost in the Shell, that that ghost in the shell do again? <laughs> very, very poorly. It tanked very bad. Was it, it was, as was it as bad as Dragon Ball Evolution? I don't think anything can possibly be bit as bad. You, as what, you know what was actually good, despite being like what we call whitewashed, or is the Power Rangers movie? It was not as bad. Power Rangers movie isn't whitewash. Power Rangers is a different thing. Fucking Super Sentai. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's not the same. That, that that Saban guy knows what he's doing. We should have him direct more I, Power Rangers. Stuff. I would. I wouldn't say that. I would not know about that one. Shake my head. All right. Well, moving. On. Well, I just wanted to have one comment on this, where it was like, um, I mean, I don't Dude, know. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Uh, what? I mean, what, what no. Is... Wouldn't it be Zac Efron? No, I think well, Leonardo DiCaprio is like. The head of the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leonardo well, DiCaprio. I feel like we can trust him. What's he done recently? And apparently, and apparently, part of uh, well, he he uh, one of the other people that's helping on the project, uh, Taika Waititi, uh, it also uh, I think helped worked on uh, Thor Ragnarok and stuff like that. So um, I don't know. I have no idea did, how did, this did, was he. Well, did he work on Captain Marvel? No, I'm not sure. I, no. he, I don't think so. He's yeah. done a lot of Marvel shit, though, right? Yeah, 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 he's done a decent amount, but I, he did a, did not do Captain Marvel. I know that much. Yeah, but what? You know what's coming out soon? That Godzilla movie is that? Is, is that? Uh, what's it called? That Godzilla movie has King Ghidorah and all all our favorites in. It. Is that a Japanese? Is that the Japanese Godzilla or the American Godzilla? No, it's the American one. Yeah. The American one now. Yeah. It's also going to be the first Godzilla of the new era, so... Oh, yeah. First Raywa who, Godzilla? Who, yeah. Who's that let them fight guy? He was in this movie. <laughs> well, uh, regardless of who's he, in... He, 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 was, he was all like... The, the, the UN was... Here's the UN again. The UN was all like, What, you, you want to make Godzilla our pet? And he's all like, No. We are his. And I was like, Yeah, it's that guy. Oh, yeah. I remember, actually, for that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I just wanted to point out that um, 
I, I don't know how I feel about this, where it's like, on one hand, yeah, it's good that it's, I, I guess it's it's better than nothing that uh, a lot of these like series are getting more like mainstream like Hollywood attention. Although it's obvious that it's like a lot of these are kind of getting warped along the way. But um, I don't know how I, how I feel about kind of you know so much money being thrown around, right? Cause I feel like it's it's going to be like a bubble in some sense where it's like like if you're rece- like if you're talking about you know receive having such big projects that you're receiving you know like tax credits from states so that that you can work in their you know states and stuff like that right like 20 million us dollars for tax credits and stuff. i think it's going to be a dangerous bubble especially since you know there are only so many old you know classic pillar almost like pillars of uh, anime history like series or movies that you can turn into hollywood you know, state you know, like stage plays, right? It's what, like what, what? What do we have left? We we have Astro Boy. We had a Speed Racer. We had Dragon Ball. That was good, though. Mm-hmm. We had you. We have Yu Gi Oh. Did you oh, know? Did you God. know? Did you know Yu Gi Oh? The movie was made for American audiences. Was Paprika already done? Paprika was already done, right? Live action. Yeah. Uh not a Hollywood one. Oh, okay. 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 So uh, well, I mean, what, what live do we action have left? lane, live action lane, starring <laughs> a one girl That's from uh, not Sc- oh, oh, no, <laughs> starring Scarlett Johansson. No, it's starring the one girl from fucking Stranger Things, dude. We have Pokemon. Oh, just like I tell. We don't have. Oh, wasn't there? We, we had G Savior, right? That's a crappy ass Gundam movie. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Sa- Sailor Moon. We do not have a Sailor Moon yet. They're gonna, they're gonna do, they're gonna do a live, they're gonna uh, do a live action version of uh, Ashita no Joe, but, uh, but, but, it, but was Joe that... is gonna have to fight uh, Mike Tyson at the end. <laughs> was it? Uh, we already had a battle box. Like Ip Man, like, like how Ip Man ends. <laughs> like he's gonna have to fight. Gonna... Shut up! Shut, Shut up! Man. Wait, 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 which, Joe which Ip Man? Rocky at the end. Then, then he fight uh, Mike Tyson. Until the rock starts rapping in the middle. <laughs> like... I guess to start, he has to fight fucking Rocky Balboa at the end of the movie. He doesn't Spe- even fight a real person. Speaking- yeah, just, it's just CG Rocky Balboa. Speaking, speaking of the rock, so just, you- just like goes off and makes another oh, fucking. Did you Rocky know- Balboa played by Dwayne the Rock? <laughs> played by the rock. like. <laughs> That's what you're gonna say. I mean, did you know that the Rock wasn't even in the Shazam movie? They took. They took no, out. No, he wasn't. They took out Black, Black Adam. Wasn't in it. Yeah, they're no. Gonna... The Rock was never supposed to be. He's going to be in a Black Adam movie. Like, yeah. well, why? He was separate, never supposed to be in a Shazam movie. Yeah, That's weird, because yeah. because Black Adam Shazam's the main villain. They're, they're trying to set stuff up, right? Because Black Adam, um, if I remember right, he doesn't start as a villain, right? So it was no. He was the dude who was all like, "We have all the Shazam powers, but we're gonna I turn evil." Killed all those dudes. That's where I'm like, damn, we need another one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the Shazam lore. Me, me neither. Yeah. It's a good but, movie, though. Anyway. That, that, yeah, that, 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 huh? that old guy who played Shazam, he did the Fortnite dance. God damn it. And that was apparently right. his idea. Shaking my head. But, anyways, we should move on. Uh, but that was just uh, my little comment about uh, Akira here. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other one that might be even bigger. In more recent news uh, than what we just covered, is that Netflix announced that its cast of ten episode live action live action series adaptation of the nineteen ninety eight television anime Cowboy Bebop on Thursday. The announcement describes the series as a quote unquote TV drama, blah blah, uh, and the cast includes John Cho as Spike, Mustafa Shakir as Jet. Wait a minute, hold on. Daniela Pineda as Faye, uh, Alex Hassel, Hassel as Vicious. And yeah, so uh, the, uh, aren't aren't oh, those aren't those the isn't that Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? Yeah, John shows. Yeah, know, then, yeah. <laughs> then who's a, who's a who's Jed? Is that is that the uh, White Castle guy? No, <laughs> no, this is not, this not the returning cast of Harold and Kumar. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I I would actually watch that series. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, who, who's the chick? Is she also from White Castle? <laughs> I don't no. know. I'm, I didn't look this up. John Cho doesn't live in White Castle. <laughs> Cal Penn is. 
Like what? Cal what is Cho and Cal Penn actually work at White Castle? All I know is that he's the White Castle dude, and then like he was in American <laughs> Wedding. <laughs> Mustafa Shakir, but it's not Mustafa Shakir, but it's Cal Penn Blackface. Who's who's the guy that played Asian Jim? Uh, it's, it's the no, that's the guy from Fresh Off. The yeah, that's what that's what <laughs> I was talking about. Oh, it's, okay. It's, uh, yeah. Um, it's fucking who was it? Uh, give me a second. It's Randall Park. Randall Park. Why? Why wasn't he Spike? <laughs> Don't ask me. My, my guess is like John Cho just did his like. The real Star question Trek, is Trek why shit. the fuck <laughs> is Keanu Reeves Spike? Yeah. <laughs> we, we we saw we saw him as uh John Wick and the the Matrix guy. Yeah. We we know he could fight. Uh, but anyways, uh, what do you guys think about? This sort of general thing happening, both the, the ten episode live action as well as the um, I've... yes, general casting. Who who's I mean, that? Who's, di who's directing it? Because like to me, it's like yeah, the cast is one thing, but yeah. Uh, so the first two episodes uh, will be directed by Alex Garcia Lopez, who who's did that? stuff like Wow, Witcher. this already sounds fucking yeah, terrible. He's <laughs> the first two like episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this sounds like a great idea already, but <laughs> go on. Yeah. Um, the series is co-production between Netflix and Tomorrow Studios, with Netflix handling fiscal production. Tomorrow Studios is a partnership between producer Marty Marty Adelson, I, I, sorry, Adelson and ITV Studios. Shinichiro Watanabe, the original anime's director, is serving as consultant for the project. The last time Andrew. someone consulted was what? That, that's not promising. It's, it, this is no Itsuno, or no, Itsuno is all like, <laughs> Itsuno's all like, hey, I'm not going to let you die, DMC2. Then he's all like, Damn, that sucked. Let's make DMC three and four. Then now he's all like, "Hey, I want, I want to make DMC five where I'm quitting." And they're like, "No, do it." And he's all like, "Yeah, I did it." It's. I mean, just in general, this is probably going to just end up like fucking what's it called, Ghost in the Shell again, with like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. There's um, consultations going on. So, like, didn't didn't <laughs> Kojima didn't Kojima also consultate when they did Lords of Shadow? And he didn't even really do much. Yeah, they just threw his name on it. But like, I mean, <laughs> of course they're consulting with them. It's like, it's their IP. They have yeah. to, right? So them saying that doesn't really mean much. E even if they bring in like a single picture and like ask for permission, it's probably he's already a consultant almost. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah, whatever. Just... I mean, like yeah, how about this cast? I'm just gonna be yeah. like yeah, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay, you're a consultant. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I see the I see the dollar signs in front of my eyeballs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. Who who but made yeah, the it, original it... uh the original anime? Was it Dean? <laughs> Isn't it Sunrise? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. 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 But um. Anyways, so in 2014, they were. Uh, Hollywood again had ideas about doing Hollywood both stuff, but uh, back then Shinichiro Watanabe commented there were like, he was like there are a lot of Hollywood problems. I don't know if it's going to progress. I don't really want to commit to it unless I think I can do it better than last time. So apparently this might go better than last time unless there's like somebody just puts the brakes on it. But we'll see how it goes. I mean, it'll go better in the fact that it'll actually get made. Well, yeah, <laughs> because Netflix doesn't usually. Uh, just announce shit, and then bro, they're just like, yeah, never and then mind. just cut it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, like Netflix is gonna push this out regardless of how fucking bad it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's hopefully, hopefully, like Otakus will just eat it up and shit. Yeah, <sighs> I really don't know how to feel about this. Um, because like <sighs> the casting is really, I mean, it's kind of a non-issue. Um, a lot of people are like, oh yes, finally. A series that doesn't whitewash, and it's like, okay, but this is like how the we series still needs to be good. Like, yeah, still, yeah. I mean, it needs to be good, but but again, it's Cowboy Bebop, right? Everyone's like, oh yes, F John Cho is Spike. Yes, not a white man, and it's like, well, <laughs> first of it all, it really doesn't matter. Spike is an Asian. <laughs> he's he's very clearly. I mean, he's described to be racially ambiguous to begin with like he's like half jewish or something mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't matter who was casted as spike uh second of all a black man is cast as jet like that's the completely opposite skin tone of jet that's weird yeah um, <laughs> i don't know about so that already funny stuff's going on um 
I mean, the other casts are whatever, right? But like, Faye Valentine whoever... has, has to be the Ada of the group. She has to be Asian. I mean, can we can we just have a gay black Hermione already? Or what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> well, Did you... already got that. So, but... so Spike's supposed to be racially ambiguous, right? Yeah. So what, well, then, then, then what's a... Uh, like Spiegel? Then uh, what about Steven Seagal? What, what, what is he? <laughs> he is 8 million uh, years old. Yeah. He's all like what Russian, right? He's he's also he's also randomly in like in North Korea or some shit right now, or or like he randomly visits North Korea for some reason, some shit. We're also talking racially ambiguous, not fucking yeah. like species ambiguous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if Steven Seagal is even fucking human. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I've I would not, feel about this. I've never seen uh, anyone else break arms just by doing Aikido like Steven. Oh. I have also never seen well, Steve you're not... Seagal <laughs> break anyone's arm. Yeah, <laughs> and you're, it, it, I'm not it, supposed it, to break anybody's arms using Aikido in the first place. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. you you you, don't, you never seen a Steven Seagal movie? He does his fancy Aikido <laughs> judo flips, and no, he like I've breaks their arms. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to. I have not seen Steven Seagal the man break anyone's arm. Yeah. I've also not seen Steven Seagal like do stuff <laughs> for a, a long time. So, anyways. Uh, we should probably move on from there, but we hope that... Wait, as... before you do that, so we yeah. only know, as far as directing goes, we only know of someone who's doing two episodes of it, that's it? No, yeah. the, we, we, have, we have information on, like, who's consulting, who's doing executive produ production and stuff like that with all over the place, and Chris Yost, who, again, also helped with stuff like uh, uh, some Marvel movies and so on, uh, is helping to do uh, the writing and executive production. So we have, like, a lot of executive producers but that doesn't really mean anything no yeah i just mean like directors well, like directors, yeah there's not right? that much news on, any uh, on direct, that? direction no, no, no we don't know the schedule of the episode releases right like they could be some weird thing where it's like they're being recorded like you know months apart from each other yeah so exactly something really bizarre because i can't really think of any other reason <laughs> to list like director of two episodes right like yeah these, exactly i have a feeling that I feel like these episodes are going to be like, you know, an hour long each, you know, mm -hmm. like they're going to be like, it's going to be that kind of format and they're released like quite far apart. You know, I feel like that's the only explanation. They I should do they should... like only listing a director for two episodes. Right. I really hope they don't has do Netflix, that. Has Netflix done releases that are far apart in recent memory? Uh no. No. Or do you think they, it should? They're just gonna it, like. It's a you know, have a thing. Massive gap between actual filming. I hope they. Just... I hope they do what they did with Castlevania, where they do like one season. We're gonna give you all of these in two years. Here you go. Here's a second season. I mean, that's what Netflix does for everything. Yeah. What I'm talking about is them doing something different. I think they're going to release like an episode at a time, and they're going to be quite, quite far apart. Is what I'm thinking. I, I don't. I don't is... want that. Netflix is I for mean... binging. Amazon mm -hmm. is for watching weekly. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Like, there's nothing wrong with Netflix releasing an episode at a time. Like, honestly, I would rather they do that for a lot of things that they have. I wouldn't. <laughs> I want to watch all episodes of Fate Extra Last Encore in one sitting. Okay, but you realize in order to do that, you had to wait for Netflix to hold on to the streaming rights of that thing for an entire fucking season. And then release it at the end of the season, all I'm, in one package. I'm completely fine with that. No. <laughs> it makes no difference. <laughs> I don't want to watch it weekly. Let me let me binge it all in one sitting and be like, "Hey, where's the rest?" <laughs> Instead of watching it weekly and be like, "Hey, where's the rest?" The, the yeah, sense of fulfillment is different. <laughs> sure. Like, all right, we should probably move on here. But again, we hope that this one will be slightly better than uh, uh, what we we expect it to be, let's say. But um, anyways, next on. Uh, this is a little bit of uh, weird news. Police arrested a 25-year-old male nursing home employee in Tokushima's Yoshinogawa city on March 29th on charges of intimidation and forcible obstruction of business for sending a threatening message to media company Square Enix. Uh... 
According to authorities, the suspect left a message in a questionnaire for a role-playing game by Square Enix on February 5th. He reportedly wrote, Square Enix staff, I'm coming to kill you tomorrow. Uh, wash, your, uh, wash your heads for beheading. Wash your neck and wait. That's- yeah, wash your neck and wait is pretty much what he, what he wrote. Um, blah, blah, blah. The suspect admitted to the charges and he wrote in his deposition that he had written the message to quote-unquote seek revenge. He had spent 200,000 yen, which is around uh, 1,800 US dollars, to acquire an in-game item, but did not end up getting it. Ah, I gotcha. <laughs> well, what what game? Uh, Probably Brave Exvius. Yeah, uh, Square Enix also received around 30 messages with the word kill since last September. Police are investigating any possible links to the suspect. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So don't... Uh, don't play gotcha games if you can't handle this, or at least control your spending. And uh, devs should not be surprised that if you make gotcha games, this kind of shit happens. Do <laughs> you mean to tell me that if you make a fucking product that has uh, just horrible, horrible like monetization, call, just not things. even monetization, just in general, Drop like rates? these fucking just horrible consumer practices? Yeah, exactly. You mean to tell me that, like, some crazy might get a little bit upset? Yeah. Because all you're really doing is trying to fucking feed off of crazy people that, to begin with? Pretty that's much, why, yeah. That's why you pretty should buy Yu-Gi-Oh unstable cards. Unstable people. Yu-Gi-Oh cards like, are better. Uh, gotchas are literally just made for people who are fucking compulsive people. It's yeah, like, pretty much. It's, it's, it's like when people are like, well, uh, if you just had all I had responsibility, but it's like the entire game is based around trying to like based around people not having responsibility with you. Yeah, exactly. Like, trying to fuck you. None of these games would stay afloat if they if everyone was responsible. Exactly, exactly. You think fucking you think Grand Blue would stay afloat if everyone was like fucking me and <laughs> spent only thirty dollars and has been playing it for like fucking five months now? Yeah, fucking shaking my head to be honest, but uh. Anyways, uh, that's Sander Gotcha News. Uh, next on the list. That's why you have... should buy Yu Gi Oh cards instead. If you don't get what you want, hey, buy the card, buy the single. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like find, find, find the aims like How's that. Are as long as the finite, finite thing isn't also super expensive. But, uh, anyways, next piece of news Japanese publisher Kodansha announced 12 nominees in three categories for its 43rd annual manga. Awards on Wednesday, Kodansha will announce the winner for each category on May 10th. So Kodansha manga awards are also, you know, pretty big manga awards. It's not as, like, niche and, like, specific, like, like professional picked as uh, something like uh, Tesco Samu Awards and stuff like that. Uh, but it does still uh, bring out a lot of uh, series that you might not have heard before. But also some uh, more mainstream stuff. Anyways. Best Shona manga. Uh, this is uh, Act Age or Act... Really? Oh. Act. Act. Okay. Actage. Actage. Act. Actage. It, it's it's like actage or something that is is how it's shown in the katakana. But actage, and uh, by Tatsuya Matsuki and Shiro Usazaki. The quintessential t- quintuplets or Gotobun no Hanayome by Negi Haruba. To your eternity. To your eternity. Kumetsu no Anata e by Yoshitoki Oima. I've heard a lot of good things about To Your Eternity, actually. Uh, I should really, really read it. Um, but, uh, Aochan Can't Study, again, what we covered. Midara na Aochan no ben- wa Benkyo ga Tekinai by Ren Kawahara. Is that so, Boku Ben? No, it is not. <laughs> it is not. Yeah. Uh, but the Shoujo series that, we're gonna, uh, that got the awards or were nominated, I believe. Yeah, nominated. Are Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight, Kozen Zeruji, Kiss Shini Kitu by Rin Mikimoto, Nagi no Oitama or Nagi's Long Vacation by Mr. Kona, by Mr. Konari, Perfect World by Ria Aruga, and Our Precious Conversations or Boku to Kimi no Taizetsu na Hanashi by Robiko. And the best general manga nominees are What Did You Eat Yesterday? Kino Tan Nani Tabata, and this is pretty interesting. Um, by Fumi Yoshinaga, uh, Showa Tenno Monogatari, or Showa Emperor Tale, by Junichi Nojo, The Blue Period, by Tsubasa Yamaguchi, and Watashi wa Douka Shiteiru, or There's Something Wrong With Us, by Arisa Natsumi. 
So in the past years, Kodansha gave out a Best Children's Manga Award as well. But starting in 2015, Kodansha has integrated the nominees for that category into the Best Shonen Manga and Best Shoujo Manga categories instead. So yeah, um, hopefully we'll see how this pans out in the near future. Uh, but anyways, next, uh, just a couple company pieces of news before we head on into the people news and then uh, do our shoutouts and callouts. First off, I'll just go down the list really quickly. But what about Wait. my news? What? <laughs> I got news. What is it, Toast? Yeah, what might that be? Uh, let me scroll up. All right, well, nope, never mind. No, you don't. Hey, dude, it's right here. <laughs> what, what is it, Toast? You, you want me to cover it already? All right. God. What's Can, the, what, what sure. It? What's the news? Fate Stay United Heaven Steel 2 Lost Butterfly Film Strip sells for $2,600 on Yahoo oh, Auctions. <laughs> All right, it well. It counts as news. You can't, you can't lie. <laughs> It is a piece of news, but it's not. <laughs> Usually, we don't cover that as much. But, but it's uh, important. Yes. All right, Tess. To thank you for. Industry, you, you, uh, let me uh, let me summarize it then. You know how uh, there was. It? <laughs> you don't need to summarize it, right? It's in the title. In the, <laughs> it's in the title. <laughs> in in the February, Heaven's Field came out in February last year in Japan, or this fifth week, whatever. The the. In Japan, there was all like, hey, you want a film strip of a random scene in the movie? People were like, yeah, that's cool. So the one that sold for $2,600, $2, guess which one it was? It was that one scene where Shiro got in. So it was all like, that's a, that's pretty that's a pretty hefty one. All right. Another, and then, then there was another one where Sakura's in your underwear, and I'm like, ew. Nine, $900, <laughs> sure. And then okay. Archer, Archer is like what twelve hundred dollars? Well, that's because it's Archer. Everyone likes Archer. All right, well, toast. And then, and then the Shinji thank one is five dollars. So, if you if you want right, one, toast. Thank you. Buy a Shinji one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there there are like film strips on Yahoo auctions for uh, the movies. So, if you want some novelty goods, please do check them out. And uh, they are a pretty unique piece of. Uh, I guess I want to say it's, it's a history. piece of history. Yeah, anime history. So please do check that out if you're interested. Uh, back to company news. First off, uh, Greenwood, the parent company of visual novel game developer Light, announced on Sunday that the company has dissolved as of Sunday. The company's campus brand has been sold to Akabe Soft 2, with the planned April 28th release of the brand's Koyoto Piace, Piace visual novel moving forward still under the campus brand. The team working on the Silverio series is preparing to continue development with a different company, series final work plan for release next year. So it's pretty much just like getting chopped up and sold out to different uh, companies and stuff. Now Greenwood and Light obviously are the developers behind the DS Ire, DS, DS Ire uh, series of uh, franchise and multimedia project, mobile game, visual novel, stuff like that. Um, so what happened was that they tried to create a smartphone mobile game with the DS Ire name, but then it it started working with other companies. It faced a lot of delays. And because it had too many delays and too many sort of misinteractions with companies, with other companies, they ended up having to declare bankruptcy and face their limits. So that's sort of how um, it panned out and Greenwood had to dissolve. And it said that the smartphone game, DSCD Pantheon's development is canceled, but the game still has plans and production materials. The staff attached to the project still want to finish the game and are willing to develop the title elsewhere. The announcement noted that it is accepting proposals from other companies to this end, but did not announce concrete plans to continue development on the game. Very unfortunate. Uh, so Light and Greenwood were both founded in June 1999, so very, very old uh, company here. Um, but it is unfortunate that it happened the way it did. It kind of uh, tried to bet it all on a smartphone game to kind of become bigger, and then it kind of failed. And visual novel companies don't have that much money to spend unless they're like, I mean, even like the A, like S tier studios, August, Usersoft, um, Key Studios don't really have that much money unless they're like tied to a uh, much bigger company. So it is very unfortunate what happened. Uh, yeah. What 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 did, what's the DA series series again? Was that the one about the military in Germany? Yeah, it was. It was about like supernatural Nazis, essentially. Uh, um, no thanks. But it, this is 2019. We don't. We don't <laughs> let. We don't let Hitlers and fly here. <laughs> okay. Uh, next like Tanya in... or something. <laughs> uh, next piece of news. 
Animation studio Gonzo revealed the financial report for the year ending in December 2018 on Monday. The company reported sales of 1.527 blah blah about the company reported sales of uh, around 13.7 million US dollars, an operating loss of about 3.58 million US dollars, an ordinary loss of around 3.9 million dollars, and a total loss of about around 5.35 million dollars. The company result, reported an insolvency of around 30.5 US million dollars for the year. Um, so in last year's report, uh, and for 2017, they reported like uh, the general profit of around a total profit of around 1.93 million US dollars. However, in the previous year, the company switched from releasing its financial report in March to December. So last year's report only covered March to December 2017. But I mean, it doesn't really matter too much there, I think. Uh, unless it, there was some very weird like asset uh, asset switching or asset uh, flipping there, but um, yeah, I, it seems very troublesome around what happened. Like even even if there was like a difference in reporting, the difference in terms of how this loss came about shouldn't be that big, right? So I'm very curious to know what happened to Gonzo in the past year. And uh, maybe there'll be some sort of postmortem if some sort of like acquisition or solution happens. I hope it doesn't. I don't think it'll dissolve. Probably. Like, I mean, there are plenty of studios out there that are uh, running in the red under like an umbrella company, and Gonzo is running under Asatsu DK. But uh, I don't know. Uh, it will, we might have to see what more reports come out. But it is kind of troubling, right? Because Gonzo isn't like. Gonzo isn't like the biggest company or biggest studio out there, but it's not like a small company by any means. Next piece of news. DLC Incorporated announced March 30th that it's selling its shares of the Coyote joint ventures to its co-shareholders Toei and Toei Animation Music Publishing. The sale will involve a transfer of, uh, of around 400,000 US dollars and DLE will record an extraordinary, uh, of, uh, record an extraordinary loss of around 215,000 US dollars for its third quarter earnings ending in June. So uh, DLE is per perhaps best known for its work on the Eagle Talon anime franchises. The series' other anime include, you know, various small stuff, Sword Guy the Animation, Orotachi Yokai Ninge, Thermai Romai, Hayuru Nyaruani. So almost like uh, net animation and kind of stuff. So they're kind of like you know, being shunted off it, into Toei. And the final piece of news is that Netflix announced on Wednesday that its planned increase of subscription plan prices uh, will take yeah. effect for existing subscriber subscribers in May. Again? Netflix announced <sighs> Netflix announced a price increase in January, but it only took effect immediately for new subscribers. The rollout to existing subscribers planned at the time for the quote unquote next three months. Uh, blah, blah, pretty much everything affects pretty much everybody in the Americas. Service's most popular plan, which allows users to stream in HD, raised its price from US 11, from eleven dollars to US thirteen dollars per month. The service's most expensive plan, uh, which allows users to stream in 4K on up to four separate devices, increased from US fourteen dollars to US sixteen dollars per month. But yeah, so on and so forth. Um, the price increase is the first time the service has increased price for all of its subs subscription plans. I mean, I'm not too surprised by this, right? It's like. Uh, the way the business model is running, the way the grip, uh, the si significant grip that Netflix has on on uh, people, and the way that people are also trying to circumvent it by, you know, torrenting or trying to use other stuff, uh, uh, this sort of ri rise in prices was inevitable, but it's still not very pleasant, right? So, uh, unfortunate, but we'll see how hands out in the future. On to some people news. Uh, very short people news today. Uh, first off, voice actress Fuyumi Shirai, she passed away on Thursday. Uh, so that was around a week back at the age of 82. A visiting relative discovered her unconscious after she had apparently fallen in her setakaya home where she lived alone in Tokyo on Thursday afternoon. According to her family, the cause of death was ischemic, uh, ischemic heart failure. Sorry. A service will be held for family only. Uh, Shirai played Akiko Hoshi, the older sister of the titular character in the popular bas baseball, anime, baseball anime series Kyoji no Hoshi. 
Uh, she did some other stuff. She uh, also started as lead Taro Kaibutsu in the Monster Kid anime, Doranpo and Obake no Kyutaro, Pataliro and Pataliro, Kashi Imoff, and Space Runaway Ideon, and so on and so forth. Um, and obviously also uh, Mirai in the first Mobile Suit Gundam anime series. Uh, so please uh, wish condolences to your family and friends. Second piece of news, talent agency Ken Production announced on Monday that voice actress Aimi Fujimura is taking an indefinite hiatus from work due to various circumstances. Uh, Fujimura's anime roles include uh, Magi, Adventure of Sinai's Pipirika, uh, Mineva Laozabi's uh, in Mobile Suit Gundam Narrative, uh, Eiko, uh, Aizawa and uh, Squid Girl or Shinyaku Ikika Musume, Chiharu Harukaze in Hayate no, uh, Hayate no uh, Gotoku or Hayate the Kami of Butler. Which one was Harukaze? Is that the pink one? Chiharu? Yeah. Um, it was the one with like the darkish purple hair or something oh. like that. I, okay. Okay. Yeah. But oh, with and the glasses. So yeah. There you uh, go. That was, yeah. So um, please wish her the best of luck and whatever is going on with, uh, with her life right now, and hopefully she can make it back into uh, uh, a lengthier career. But yeah, that was all the people news I had for today, and with that, we are finally. So with our first episode, but not before, first episode of Spring 2019, but not before, our shoutouts and callouts. So uh, each person here gets one shoutout, one callout. A shoutout is something that you want to praise. 10 out of 10, you know, a lot with applause. And it is, uh, it can be pretty much one of any, one of anything, just people, places, things, whatever. And call it is the exact opposite. One thing that you want to rage over, that you are so angry about, just zero out of ten. And it can be any one person, place, or thing. And starting off with toast. Uh, Shout out to call us, please. Uh, <laughs> nice. Come on, uh, come on. You knew this was coming, right? We do this every episode. <laughs> I mean, I've had a pretty mid- middling week. I don't know. Okay, do you want me to go to someone else while you think of something? <laughs> uh, sure. Okay, near. Um, uh, Shoutouts to... Uh, I don't know. Shoutouts to... Um, who's your favorite, just, who's your favorite streamer? What? Who's your favorite streamer? Or... Game. Yeah, who's who's your favorite streamer on Twitch not TV? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Nice. Um, yeah. I don't know. Shout outs to uh my birthday. It was pretty fun. Nice. Pretty cool. what, what what'd you get? Uh money. <laughs> All the what, money. What kind what kind of cake? Uh ice cream cake. As usual. It's like this ice cream, uh, it's like this ice cream, uh, pie thing, oh, okay. um, where it's got like, you know, the, uh, the crust on the bottom or whatever. It's pretty good. You know, I never really good. liked ice cream cake except for cookies and cream. Like if you had, if you had a choice between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> between, I, between, no. Between cheesecake and ice cream, I'd definitely choose cheesecake. But unless it was like cookies and cream, ice cream cake, then we'd have a competition. I'm not the biggest fan of cheesecake. But, I mean, I've always got an ice cream cake for my birthday, so it's just something um, something that keeps going, you know? It keeps, it keeps um, you going in life? Yeah, not, it keeps, no, I have me, a qu- keeps not me today, old friend. for, for another <laughs> year. <laughs> but, uh... What's your call out now of like 400 different choices you have in front of you? Yeah, there's a lot. Especially after the news. Especially after the news. Oh, no, not even. Not even. Not just even. That. It's that. been like four weeks. And oh, yeah, that's true. Man, is there a lot. There's that's a true. lot no, I agree. I agree. of stuff that's happened. Um, it's tricky, man. It's tricky. Um, I think I'm going to go with. Uh, Fuck man. I think I'm gonna go yeah, with the right border on. I think I'm gonna go with the borderlands stuff. Um mm. so uh 
Borderlands 3 got announced. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty exciting. You know, I like Borderlands quite a bit. Um, it's a fun game. Um, and uh, it came out uh, a while ago that, you know, it, along with many other games, are going to be Epic Store exclusive, right? Um, and of course, everybody lost their shit because, you know, everyone's everyone's flipping out because it's like, oh, Epic Game Store, gross! Um, and so they started review bombing uh, every other Borderlands game that's on Steam. Um, thinking that somehow that's gonna like do something, like that's somehow making a statement. Um, and uh, it doesn't. Believe it or not. No, it did. It got Randy Pitchford to call them fucking babies. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Grats. Um. Yeah. Honestly, like this whole the whole deal with the Epic Game Store lately, it it really just shows you how immature a lot of um gamers are i guess i don't know i don't really i still hate saying gamers but uh video game players you want to say that yeah people who buy video games Mm -hmm. on the pc platform um you you mean those professional gamers like the journal (laughs) (laughs) that's that's a separate issue did did you know journalists hate nero in dmc5 and they cheat on Sekiro. Uh huh. <laughs> but um, yeah. Just like the idea that you know another platform comes in, right? And granted, the platform is not very good, right? Like it's very bare bones. The yeah. Epic Store, um, it's lacking a lot of features, right? Like I don't believe it has tags in its storefront. Um, doesn't have like. Uh, messages between friends on its platform. You know, it's missing a lot of stuff. And it's not a very... It's not the best-looking storefront in general, right? Um, But the fact of the matter is, the harsh reality is that Steam, uh, for the longest time, uh, has been shafting developers uh, with the absolutely terrible cut they give for every sale. And, you know, Epic's, Epic came in and they were like, hey, we'll give you a better cut. And developers saw that and were like, well, we'll take it, you know? And not only is it a better cut, for any game that uses Unreal Engine, they waive the fee. Yeah. The thing is, I don't think think anybody is being like, oh, Epic Store, like, isn't very good. Like, everybody's like, Epic Store, like, like... Doesn't seem no. Very... They're saying Epic Store is stealing my information and giving it to the judge. yeah, yeah. But 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 the problem is the way that people are responding to Epic Store, not necessarily what the Epic Store is, is a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's just the like the response of just like screaming like a baby on on Steam. To be, like to begin with, like you're screaming about the Epic Store on Steam, like how dumb can you be to begin with? Um, but like the mentality of thinking that like that's going to do something, like like the Epic Store is going to go away because you're screaming about it on Steam yeah, reviews the, uh, for a game that's on Steam. I'm already like, shaking my head here. Like how dumb can you be? But again, oh. like. The the issue is, Steam fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. It sucks ass. It's fucking over developers. It's fucking yeah. over publishers. And also, also remember that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to just make this just like a. But what about Steam Store? But what about? It? I don't want to make it that fight. But it's like for all the people that are like complaining about the whole like info thing. Remember the time when the uh, Steam page like the profile pages and stuff like that uh people could do uh sql injections and stuff if i remember correctly yeah and remember, then, yeah, remember when you logged on remember those yeah, remember yeah couple and, days where you would log on to steam and you just be in a different person's account yeah or or like or like the moment you saw like somebody's profile picture you get uh that injection going on and then now you got essentially fucked right it's like <laughs> yeah. like that so it's not like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well because 
whole markets are glorified. Uh, what's it called? They're just glorified HTTP like web pages. They're yeah, not... they, they are quite weak. <laughs> they're, they're nothing more weak. than that. They're yeah, just yeah. a program that essentially opens a browser. Why do you yeah, think yeah. Steam literally has a fucking browser like in the top part of it, and Steam is able to be used in a browser? Like, yeah, it's the exact same. I was going to yeah. say, too, uh, I love the fine irony of well, complaining about how the Epic Store doesn't have, quote-unquote, a major feature of user reviews, and then they just do this on Steam anyway, which completely makes user reviews worthless, because <laughs> that's not what they're there for. Uh, so I thought that that was, that was pretty fun. I, I also think, like Spire said, too, it's like people don't... The, the problem... It, with it is nobody is people, arguing that the epic store is saying, like meh it's like no, it's more yeah. just like what people should be saying is a the epic store needs to be better and b steam needs to make their cuts better to compete like it's not good enough for steam to be like oh yeah you know what um we'll 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 lessen it to 20 percent after you get millions in sales what the fuck so okay so you're still eight percent that's still eight percent more than epic will take baseline and you're saying that I can only get to that after millions of dollars in sales. So mm. basically, any indie game is just fucked over. Like, any small indie game is fucked. Um, and then big name games that use the Unreal Engine are still getting the 20% cut from Steam taken, and the 5% cut now has to go to Epic anyway because for Unreal. Right, right. So it's like, in general, too, I feel like people are also saying shit like oh man borderlands 3 like ugh, like fuck epic for making that exclusive it's like do you think anyone at gearbox or or take two would have been like oh yeah yeah let me um let me go to steam instead of the epic store now and let's just get have 35 percent taken away from yeah, like what it's... <laughs> like well, like no like epic doesn't even have to do anything at that point epic could just be could not I, no one knows if there was even a deal cut at this point, and yeah. they wouldn't really have to because there there doesn't have to be a deal for Gearbox to look at. Oh, the Epic Store will give us like fucking twenty five percent more in sales revenue. Okay, yeah, we'll go there instead. Yeah. Like, why sell on Steam if they're just gonna sell if they're just gonna take more money? Yeah, and uh, then, which isn't even an exclusive either. Which, by the way. What are we gonna tally up? How many games are exclusive to Steam? Like, like everyone keeps talking about exclusivity, and it's like, well, what can you only get on Steam? Because there are a lot of things, even off of like fucking Humble Bundle and other storefronts, where it's like it's just a Steam key or anything anyway. Yeah, it's it's oh, very unfortunate. Do, but, uh... Oh, does uh, do, no, never mind. That the talk of colors is that. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see how it pans out. But um, anyways, uh, dark. You want all based off that? Uh, do you want to continue with your shout out and calls or shout out a call rather? Okay, so my shout out. This is a hard one too. I mean, all of these are pretty hard because, like I said, there's like 30 million different things to call out. There is a couple to shout out. I'm just gonna shout out the show. Uh, Meng Chi Shi Shen. The heck is that? That's, um, I think it roughly translates to, um, Cinderella Chef, or Food Goddess, Adorable Food Goddess, and it's a, chi it's based off of a, uh, Chinese web novel. Uh, How come I haven't a, read that? <laughs> it's a Chinese, it's a Chinese. So you can't uh, read every Chinese web novel, okay? I, I mean, <laughs> a, the le I read The Magic Chef of Ice and Fire, is it like that? Well, it's a think. shoujo series. Yes. Um, <laughs> that, that's... Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Is it like... <laughs> Keep going. But anyway, um, because Spire is a disgusting human being, and <clears throat> sunk the shoujo in my veins and baited me with, uh, uh, what's it called, Chihaya Furu so many years ago, uh, I decided to give this a shot because it was pretty highly rated, especially for a Chinese anime. And so I started watching it, and its production is good. Its audio visuals are pretty good. Um, 
pretty impressive in some parts. I feel like they, I don't know, because I only watched one and a half episodes, but it seems like they rotoscoped for, like, the clothes in a lot of scenes. Like, I don't know if they just did that or if they actually rotoscoped or not, because there's, like, there's not, like, as much movement as rotoscoping. There's a lot of changes in fold stuff. It's not, like, I feel like it's not as much. But either way, it looks really nice. Got uh, pretty good audio as well. Uh, yeah. And yeah. And your call? Um, all right, what to call out? Epic Store is down. Um, shit. I got to flip a coin really quick. You know, fuck it, no. I'm going to he- call he- out. Um... Heads you win, tails you lose. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna call out. Uh, I'm gonna call out the FF14 Fan Fest, Tokyo Fan Fest. Because uh, <laughs> Nir and I, Nir and I watched that, and uh, you know, like, <laughs> it feels like we should have another Fan Fest for this game, because they really didn't show anything new except for one class and a new trailer. Uh, so that was really interesting. Um, they showed, like, concept art, like, like the smallest bit of concept art for certain raids and stuff, like, one new area, the six that are supposed to be in the game, for the new expansion, uh, and that was interesting, uh, having gender-locked races again was, uh, really fun, like, that was really cool, uh, basically it was, like, a downward spiral from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, they showed the super hard confirmation of Geomancer, totally. They absolutely did not. I don't know why they made a big deal about a character having a, a hammer, because that's not confirming anything. Just a because warrior's we, weapon. Yeah, it's just going to be a warrior skin or a skin for multiple classes. Like, let's be real. Uh, What's her name? Um, the girl from Palace of the Dead. Her sight is a fucking thing on the Mog Station. Like, so the fact that he even brought that up made no sense. I was like, we already have a fucking scythe for dragoons. It looks terrible. So there's nothing stopping them from using a fucking uh, giant hammer for a warrior. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also don't think they're going to... Like, they also didn't announce a new healer, which is really fun, And has a really dumb... Uh... And has a, a really stupid justification for it, uh, which was to add another ranged DPS as Dancer, because that didn't have enough job roles, because that was the only job quote-unquote role without three slots. But it's still a DPS, so now there's ten DPS in the game. Three healers, four tank. Uh, and they already can't balance two fucking ranged physical DPS that are already there. So that was like really neat. Um, but basically, yeah, like it started out with a really cool. Um, it, st- it started out with a really cool trailer. Mm-hmm. Then it was like, okay, here's some new zones, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then it was like, okay, so dancer isn't a healer. Um, also, here's like the new raids, but we're not gonna actually show you anything from the new raids. <laughs> um. Here's the oh yeah, by the way, I hope you're really excited for the new races. We have another announcement for races. Yeah, it's a male only uh race. They look ugly as fuck and have horrible texture. Really hope you enjoy that. Also no male VR, so that's cool too. Um, so it's just like it just none of the decisions made any fucking sense. It was really weird, like that they chose not to show anything. Um, they didn't even show off any new Nier Automata stuff. They were just like, yeah, by the way, we announced the Nier Automata raids like six months ago, but so as a reminder, uh, we're going to have those in the game. Yeah. So that was fun too. And that was pretty much the entire fan fest. Like, that was it. Like, here's concept art of like seven different things. Here's like a trailer that we admit isn't finished yet. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. You get GM Eden, which is pretty metal. 
What do you mean GM Eden? The new... I mean the raid? Is that the... Eden's the new the new 8-man raid, right? Yeah, which we saw yeah, nothing we, of. Yeah, we, we didn't got see literally it. no yeah. info. We, we got we a literally piece... literally saw a sapling. <laughs> we got a piece of art and one of the characters in the story. Like, There's no info on the new raid. There's no info on the new 24-man. There's no info on, like, the actual legitimate story um, in the new expansion. Like, all we know is we're going to another world. Like, yeah. there's there was no info in that keynote. It was fucking terrible. We got yeah, that, a new trailer. The it's not that it's not that the pieces of the things in isolation aren't cool from the keynote, but it wasn't enough for the keynote, right? Yeah, it's it was garbage. It was a garbage keynote. We got a new trailer, which granted was nice. It was a really nice trailer. And then it was them just like fucking around on stage for like forty minutes. And then we got two shitty reveals that everybody was salty about. Like, it was garbage. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Uh, but we'll see how it uh, goes out. But anyways, um, Toast, do you have Shadows of Cards yet? My shout out! Uh... Oh, yeah. It's to the new Yu Gi Oh! Dual Power. Box thing. Yeah. Okay, and it's you're got, caught? It's, it's got it's got a uh, it's got start it's got the Bonds Beyond Time movie cards that we finally wanted. Like to bond between teacher and student and Black Magic Twin Burst and all of those. And Stardust Wish. That's a completely new card. I want I want <laughs> my it's like the eternal soul for but for Stardust Dragon. Also, Dark Magician of Chaos, that's the new ritual that's supposed to be on par with Chaos Mech. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh... I guess I'll do my uh, Shadows Call then. My call out is to... Oh, fuck, uh, I forgot you. Keep going. Uh, when's, he when's Heaven's Field coming out? April 2020? Yeah. Let me see. Spring song, yeah. Oh, I gotta wait a year, but in that means that means I gotta wait one to two years for America because they're definitely not gonna release it during the spring. It's gonna it's, it's gonna lose all meaning. Yeah. I guess. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess shoutouts and callouts from me here is uh. My shout out. How do I say this? Um, my shout out, honestly, is to Wata Ten. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's just a very like wholesome series. I don't know how else to say it. Like, I know it's like, oh, freaking Wally's running around stuff like that, but it's it's very wholesome. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe this. So I think Dark knows what I'm talking about, it, but it's very like wholesome. Um, so I just like to shout out that. You're but, a degenerate, uh, and the UN gonna arrest you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at it; and it's already being regulated by the UN. <laughs> and um, my call out. What is? I ha I had a call out, but it was like, fuck. Uh. Oh, actually, my call out isn't even like uh, anime related. It's uh. In a rare moment, it's actually uh, the people who have like uh, the, 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 some of the food tier. So, so uh, in the past, like couple, like past week or so, right? The past week or so, I've I've been passing around uh, uh, a food tier list, a fast food tier list, right? And uh, there have been some very interesting opinions, <laughs> very interesting opinions that uh, some I was just like, nah. <laughs> Nah, I'm not about this life right now. And, uh, like, people just, like, doing stuff like, you know, putting little Caesars, like, you know, on the, on, 
upper half, you know, putting Chipotle way below Subway, stuff like that. Very, very uh, things that I'm like, no, I'm not a fan of these like decisions <laughs> that you've made. Putting Jack in the Box like S tier, I'm like, no, <laughs> this is not how life works. <laughs> this is not how life works. So uh, call out to that. That's uh, stop, stop having these thoughts, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be like some uh, thought police kind of stuff, but uh, no, <laughs> this is not acceptable. Did you see um, Justin Wong's Naruto character tier list? Oh, he put Rock Lee in trash tier. Are he you put serious? Rock Lee in trash, and he has Yo. Naruto in S tier. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I was like, who are I need you? To link that shit. I haven't. Yeah, give me that. Give me. Hit us up with that link. Let me see this. <laughs> Someone, somebody actually made, somebody actually made a tier list of Justin Wong's tier list. I'm pretty sure that was mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but everything's like yeah, all trash. of them were trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, good. I, I like, I saw that. I was like, oh my god, how can you even like? Don't talk to me. Like, actually, like, just, just don't talk to me. <laughs> like, yeah, Hook and God started making them too, and his were pretty bad as well. Yeah, but. uh <laughs> Let me see if I can find this J1. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> with that uh, in mind, we are finally done with our first... Uh, first episode of the Spring 2019 season. Again, 7th of April. We'll have a lot of you know episodes coming out. We'll have a lot of... Uh, I, think, I think this season again, will be a lot more productive than before. Uh, from last season where we were kind of like stuck between shows that we did like and then a lot of the other shows that we were like, eh, whatever on, or like we really didn't want to watch. I think there'll be a good like smorgasbord of a uh, series that we'll be able to all experience this time around, so uh, look out for that. And as always if you do like what we do here you can check us out here at twitch.tv slash 4 player and I cast this with number 4. Sorry, every we stream our podcast recordings every other Saturday starting from 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on twitch.tv again uh, slash 4player anime cast so follow us here where we talk about the latest and greatest in Japanese animation media including manga, anime, light novel, web novel, vision novel, so on and so forth and if uh, you can follow us here you can check us out on our YouTube channel for the VODs of the podcast as well in YouTube format you can follow us on social media on Facebook and on Twitter at 4PP Anime Cast is our handle. Again, with a number four for more updates and information. And yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll be covering a lot more series. We'll have a lot more selection uh, next episode, to be sure, because we'll have two more weeks and pretty much everything should have come out by then. So we'll see how that goes. And with that, we'll see you next time.